Shout out Bruce Gas, aka Token 2. You know I had to drop a track for my boy. Yeah, yeah. Been in your rap, the boys out here till the baby. I'm the hardest young nigga, I ain't signed to no label. Hey, Bruce Gas with the number fights on the table. I'm uh, calling that box. It's the game versus A. Back to school, it's Bruce Gas. You would think that she was famous. I'm the people's champion, like Muhammad Ali. Shut the shut up, Bruce Gas. One day we gon' meet. Yeah, we gon' blow it down. We gon' smoke with hella weed. Yeah, we gon' blow it down. Take a hit out the token too. Slipping hella shots. Feel like Tyson with the pink. Little Glock on my side, but it hit just like Isaac Cruz. Shut up, man. Chat real shit. That's my fucking dude. We always cooking on the family. Straps my side, I ain't talking about no sand. Bruce Pass, eat a blunt, I'ma light it like a candle. Hey, non stop bars, man, I always spit flames. Feel like Bruce Gas always got a different strain. Bitch, you ain't like me. You can never feel my pain. You win and you lose. Well, this is a fight game. Don't beef on the net and the shit won't change. Said that on the street. You gotta do it for the game. Said that on the street. You gotta do it for the chat. I ain't undisputed. Yeah. Hold on. I ain't undisputed, but I want all the straps. Thank you for stopping in here, man. Bruce Gas, Boxing Jazz, and more. I see Knockout Net is in here, man. Daryl McKinney, my brother, thank you so much for coming by. Daniel Berry, Sports Highlights, man. Salute, man. Appreciate you coming in here. I hope this music isn't too loud as I have in the background. I can't cut it down as much as I can over here. There we go. That's that's down pretty long back there, man. Thanks anybody that's coming in here. Lonnie Lee, my bro. Peace, bro. Thank you for coming by, man. We're we're, uh, we're watching the uh, the boxing on on. I guess it's on ESPN tonight, man. It's uh, Valdez and Wilson. It's a um, Mosca Valdez super featherweight bout. It should be pretty interesting, man. There's a lot of boxing on today, man. The whole weekend, it's almost like 1980 is coming back to me all over again. And, uh, uh, I was just over at Reggie Owens' channel, man. I was laughing, laughing my ass off over there. Reggie is a funny man. Ryan Hawkins, salute my brother. Thank you much for coming by, my man. Right now, there's a, uh, there's a fight going on. Um, we've got uh, Fernando Vargas' son. Emiliano is in there right now, and he's taking on some dude named Nelson Hampton. Uh, this is uh, showcasing a lot of the uh, the top rank fighters, man. I see um, a lot of these fighters with uh, high amateur pedigrees. They're getting they're getting their uh, their chance to uh, build up their records in this in this, this type of uh, this type of fight, man. Let's check out uh, Emiliano Vargas. Like I said, he's the son of the uh, ferocious Fernando Vargas, who everybody remembers. He's got an eight no record as a pro. Let's see. Is he? Has he? He's got. I'm sure he's got a pretty extensive amateur record. Yeah, he's um. He he does have an extensive amateur record. And uh, this he's uh, he's being highlighted in here, man. This this dude that he's fighting, Nelson Hampton. He's ten and ten and eight with uh with six knockouts. He's been stopped twice. And uh, you know, this is pretty much to uh to showcase. To showcase some of these these um, top ranked fighters, and uh, I mean, like boxing to boxing now, it's uh, it's almost getting 80s. Like this, uh, the, the next few weeks, and uh, things that are happening. Excuse me for a second here, man. What time is it? It's about 7:30. I got these edibles in the mail today. Made in Los Angeles. Check these bad boys out. I don't know if you can see it, I don't know if the uh, the lights too. There we go, man. They're called um. Clearly, clearly, clarity, clarity. Full spectrum cannabis, cannabis infused gummies. Six hundred milligrams of THC, and there's six of them in here, so they're hundred milligrams. 
and I'm gonna take one, let it let it kick in so I can enjoy this uh, enjoy this action going on over here. A hundred milligram edibles, man. I, I like that number. That's like the perfect size for, for me. There are six of them in here. There's a, these are great. So we'll see. I've never tried this brand, but very chewy. Very chewy. Can't talk with my mouth full. Fernando Vargas was quite the fighter in his day, man. I remember watching him in action with Oscar De La Hoya. Felix Trinidad, Shane Mosley, tough kid, tough, tough fighter, but um, that's my, my, uh, my phone is reminding me, of, my Facebook is starting too, and i have uh, already making sure I've got my audience open over there, so anybody watching me on Facebook, I appreciate it, man, this is, this is boxing on a Friday night, one of the, one of the coolest things going here, and uh, like I said earlier, this is a, um, this is Oscar Valdez squaring off against Liam Wilson from Australia. This is a um, this is taking place at the Glendale, Glendale, Arizona. It's on Fox Sports and ESPN Plus. And uh, this the uh, the main event fight is for the WBO interim super featherweight fight. I mean, there's so many belts out there today; it's ridiculous. Everything's for a belt. Hey, my brother, World Combat Sports, bro. Shout out to you, man. Always good to see you in here, man. Emiliano Vargas is in charge here. This kid Hampton. He's probably got a, a full-time job. It's tough, it's tough taking on these, these protégés because these guys are uh, they're thoroughbreds, man. You know, they're they're paid, almost paid amateurs where they, they don't have to worry about a nine to five job. They're in the gym every day. They've got nutritionists, they've got strength and conditioning coaches. You know, these guys are uh 21st century athletes and it's 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 a different game you know they i think they've seen they've seen the uh, athletes of the past and they, they they don't have the activity that the, the fighters had in the past and, but they're making a lot more money and um and this is boxing it is what it is today i'm i'm, I'm tired of, of uh i'm griping about it i watch it and i enjoy it and uh and tonight i'm looking forward to seeing richard torres you know the heavyweight one, one of bob arrows he was a uh, olympic i think he was a silver medalist we saw him get knocked out a few years back in the uh, in the Olympic in the, in the medal rounds, and uh, people are saying he's a he's a small heavyweight. He should be a cruiserweight. The dude's weighed in at something like 230. I I, I have it here. It's he weighed in over 230 pounds. So that that's not by any stretch of the imagination a small heavyweight. 236.6 pounds. He's taking on this this cat that's 276.5 pounds. Don Don Hainsworth. But I'm um, uh, keeping my eye on uh, Emiliano Vargas right now. He is in charge. Nelson Hampton is, uh, you know, he's an experienced fighter. He's got, he's got quite a few, uh, he's got quite a few fights under his belt. So he's, uh, he, he looks like he knows how to survive. I believe Emiliano was one of the showcases, one of the showcase uh, brothers of the of Vargas, the fighting Vargas brothers. Friday night boxing. I love it, man. This is this is what should happen on a Friday night. This is like we had boxing. We're having it during the week. A pro box had a con last night or Wednesday night. I mean, this is like the old days. This is like Tuesday night fights. This is like ESPN Friday night fights. And uh, man, any boxing fan who who lived it back then, they got to understand that it's happening all over again. You know, the, look at all the action we've had in Saudi Arabia. The, the year's not even four months old yet. We're going to have undisputed heavyweight championship in the world within a few weeks. We're going to have, we, we've seen, um, we've seen Joshua over there. Supposedly we're going to have this, this, um, 
this big heavyweight card with um, Deontay Wilder and Zhili Zhang and um, Vizhevek and uh, Danny Dubois. I mean, dude, this is awesome stuff. The Bud Files, my man, my man, my, my, my sister, whichever one you are, thank you, thank you guys for coming in here. I appreciate it. Appreciate the views, man. In fact, that's why I came on a little bit earlier tonight, man. Because, you know, watch hours, I find it very important. I've had I've had way more than a thousand views for a while now, but uh, my watch hours never get over three thousand. So I, I've been starting to um, try to try to accumulate them lately. I'm about sixty hours away to see if I can get my my station monetized, and um, for whatever that's worth, you know. But uh, we want to keep those. We want to keep uh, keep the hours. Keep keep them chalked up, man. Keep them interesting. Keep people here if possible. And uh, once again, man, boxing, boxing is the, uh, that's the, uh, the universal uniter as far as I'm concerned, man. That brings us all together. We all speak that same language. And we're watching an exciting card on a Friday night here, man, out, of, out from Arizona. And my brother, my ex-brother, like I said, I guess you, you don't really have an ex-brother. Your brother-in-law is your brother-in-law. He's out in Arizona. So shout out to him if he's watching, man. You know, you remember, you sold me 500 bucks, so uh, if you're ever in town, Make sure you bring a few extra C notes in your wallet, my man. Emiliano Vargas is trying to trying to get Mr. Hampton in the corner. Nice straight left hand went downstairs to the body. Very fast and educated hand. But Hampton, you can see he's no um, he's no novice. He's poking that jab, keeping those hands high, protecting that head. We're in the sixth round of a sixth round fight. <clears throat> Pretty good action going on over here. And the um, it's only going to get better. Like I said, I came out here a little earlier because I wanted to see Richie Perez. I'm a heavyweight. I'm a heavyweight uh, fanatic. Oh, Nelson just uh, Nelson Hampton just nailed uh, Fernando Vargas with a nice overhand right. He's shooting that jab in. Fernando Vargas comes through behind the combination, comes forward. Hemp is a good opponent here, though. He's, he's not, uh, he didn't come here to lose. I don't watch this fight as closely as I should have, but uh, from what I've seen of it, uh, Emiliano Fernando Vargas seems to be, seems to have a lead. He seems to, uh, he seems to be in charge. But uh, but he hasn't established any real dominance over Nelson Hampton. It's going to go to the decision. I'm, I'm pretty sure we have another minute to go in the fight. Good stuff over here. Vargas is flashing his hand speed now. He's got him against the ropes. Nice, nice, uh, nice left hook down to the body, keeping that jab to the head. Hampton shoots a right hand. Vargas moving forward behind that jab. Doing some uh, some boxing here now. Uh, Hampton tries to Hampton's trying to establish a little bit. Very very late in the fight. Only a few more seconds left to go. I think it's going to be a unanimous decision for Vargas. Like I said, I didn't watch the whole fight all that closely. Just starting up our, our glorious broadcast over here, man. Easter weekend, Good Friday. You know, I, I remember when uh, bars couldn't even serve alcohol for three hours on Good Friday. Between the hours of noon and three. Those, those were the hours that uh, our Lord suffered on the cross according to the Catholic Church. And I mean, the priests used to actually go to the bars and make sure that they weren't serving at that time. It was crazy. I mean, I'm going back to the 60s now. You know, we were, uh, there wasn't the uh, the separation of church and state like there is today. Little towns like I live in, man, they were pretty much pretty much uh, ruled by your your parish. You know, they had the Portuguese, the Polish, the French, the Italians. They all had their own churches. I think they were, most of them are closed by now. They've all um, going into one uh, going into one. Um, you know, con one congregation. But yeah, man. I mean, back in the day, I mean, shit, eating meat on a day like today, you're going to hell and you're going to burn for hell in eternity. That was a real no-no. 
I had a beautiful salmon myself tonight. My 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 old lady, she made a nice she put uh, breadcrumbs and sprinkled it with this brown sugar. It was so good. <clears throat> that some roasted potatoes and some asparagus, a Caesar salad. Man, I tell you, it's better than going out to a restaurant. But we're waiting for the official decision here. And even any of these B-side fighters who came in to top rank, they came in here pretty much expecting to lose. Just uh, just go in the distance. Let's see, what's um, what's uh, Emiliano's? Emiliano was 8-0, and I believe he had seven knockouts, so... I mean, surviving the distance with uh, with Emiliano Vargas is uh, is kind of a victory for um, for Nelson Hampton. Yeah, they're announcing the decision right now. Unanimous for Emiliano Vargas. So he's going to continue on his career. And um, our next fight on the card, man, I think it's going to be uh, Sergio Rodriguez in uh, Sammy. Dervis song. That's a, a middleweight fight. They're both uh, three pounds, almost four pounds over the middleweight limit. But I guess that really doesn't mean too much these days. It's really the name you're fighting, not so much the division. Most of these, most of these fighters on the card today, they're, they're not right on the, on, they're not on the uh, weight or under the weight. Let's we go up to the, um, to the uh, main event. 130 pounds, super featherweight. Oscar Valdez weighing at 129.7, and Liam Wilson. 129.6. Then there's a, a woman's uh, fight on the card, too. Tanisi Estrada in the Casa Valley. It's undisputed minimum world championship. So, you know, I'm not a big fan of women's boxing, but it's on. We'll watch it. We'll see if it's uh, entertaining. Now, I was on a uh, D-style show, I don't know, a year, ago, so a year or so ago. And Sinisa Strada was on there. You know, we spoke to her, I spoke to her, and wished her a lot of luck. So, so hey, man, today I can keep good on my word and, and watch her and uh, uh, cheer her on. You blast on the poker tune of our something called strawberries and cream that I'm enjoying right now. All legal, man. Rhode Island, 100% legal recreational state. It's amazing. It's a whole new industry that cropped up before our very eyes. Put a lot of put a lot of my friends out of business, but um, you can't fight progress. Yeah, giving us a little showing of Liam Wilson's uh, his last uh, he lost to Emmanuel Navarrete February of last year. He's had a couple of victories since then. So here we go, man. We're gonna be this is our main event coming up in a little bit now. We still have a uh, quite a few uh, parts on the undercard to go. Raymond Miratella, another top ranked prospect. He's on the card also tonight. This is Sergio Rodriguez, a middleweight. I believe he's, he's going to be in the next fight. If the uh, if the lineup I has is anything uh, according if it's uh, according to their order of appearance, and it's been like that so far. Let's see, man. Let's get this get this Sergio Rodriguez. Check out check out what he's uh, what he's all about in here. And the way to do it is through the site we all go to. You know, knock it as you will, man. You know, box rec is a, a definitely a friend of the boxing fans out there. Sergio Leon Rodriguez. He's a he's a middleweight with a record of ten and one. Excuse me, ten and zero with one one draw. Bob Arum's got this fight set up for him against uh, Sandy, not Sammy, Sandy, Sandy Derbison. and then he's also got a, he's also got him scheduled against a opponent to be named a month from today. 
So, you know, a month and a couple of days on the 29th and the 27th of April it was another top ranked card. It's also in Phoenix at the Celebrity Theater. This was at the Desert Diamond Arena in Glendale. So I mean Arizona, I guess uh, I guess Top Rank is uh, is digging on the is digging on the fans in Arizona. But yep, this is the this is the fight that's coming up. It's a six round middleweight fight. And hey man, let's enjoy. Let's let's enjoy the convoy. I've got a couple of windows here. One thing I don't want to do is lose my transmission halfway through the show. But they are introducing the uh, introducing the um, the opponents in the in the ring side in the, in center ring. Sergio Rodriguez and Sandy Dervis. Check out Sandy Dervis and see what Sandy's about. Cerny's got a record of 12 wins and six losses. He's been stopped once and he's got nine knockouts on his record. Who draws? He's ranked as the um, the 409th best middleweight in the world out of 1,625. According to Box Rec, he's the 71st best middleweight in the United States out of 267 active registered middleweights. He's been beaten by Brandon Adams, Lorenzo Simpson. He uh, definitely has not been managed to the best, man. Tyrell Boyd lost a decision. KO'd by Brandon Adams in, uh, in 2020. During the pandemic, probably fought in the bubble somewhere. But um, anyway, man, he's getting ready to uh, he's getting ready to go on against top top ranked prospect Sergio Leon Rodriguez. This is a um, six round middleweight fight. Anyway, it's uh, pretty much getting ready to uh, to get started. Let's see let's see what's up here. Stop motion. How we doing, my brother? Thank you much for coming by. It's uh, as you know, ESPN fights. Pull out a little butt out of my my humidor here. Stick with this this strawberry strawberries and cream cream flavor. They're yeah, feeling each other out. The classic circling around at ringside, circling around center ring. You know, shooting that jab out, trying to see uh, other guys' strengths and weaknesses, and progressively increase your energy and your punching numbers as the round, as the fight progresses. Rodriguez is uh, Rodriguez has got some nice upper body movement. Durbin song. Mostly fighting off his back foot, shooting the jab out there. The uh, the classic feeling out round. We're a minute into it. A lot of feeling out going on here. Just exchanging jabs. Rodriguez is a shorter fighter. Short arms. He looks like he's going to have to get inside and do some uh, get it, get inside and uh, and bang that body. Try to slow down Durbin Shun. Sandy's got a lot of experience. He's been in the ring with a lot of a lot of seasoned veterans. He's definitely going to give Sergio Rodriguez some uh, 
some rounds in this fight. You can tell he knows what he's doing. He's bouncing nice on his feet. He's got some footwork covering up nicely. Sergio just tried to unload, tried to get him against the ropes and uh and work the uh and try to get that guard, get that guard open. Devin is popping that jab out. That's the only way to beat a fighter like 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 Rodriguez. You can tell he's a, he's he's a flat-footed fighter. He comes forward, he's throwing wide hooks, and um, and he's trying to catch Devinson. Slow him down a little bit. The end of the round. Showing Muratella walking in the ring, man. I guess they're all they're all getting there. It's, it's still this is three hours earlier. I forget it's early. It's only eight o'clock here, so it's only. Five o'clock down in, in Arizona right now. I gotta give it to Bob Arum though. He's uh, he's helping us helping us cats over here on the uh, East Coast. We're not putting this on at a at a ridiculous time, so I'm not be having to be watching the uh, the fight start at the, uh, the card getting on underway at at ten my time, which can only be seven back then, which is the ideal time. But hey, Arum's um. Aaron's got the eye on the prize. He's a he's a businessman. He knows the uh, there's a lot of people that are watching out here on the uh, the East Coast. And we tend to be a little older. We uh, we we nod off a little earlier, and we're three hours ahead in time. So it kind of makes it nice. You know, eight o'clock. People are getting home, just getting home from work, just eating right now. And man, you got Friday night fights. And here we go, man. We got um, Sergio Rodriguez and Sandy Derbison, a couple of middleweights. Rodriguez is the um, the house fighter, top rank fighter. There's a nice triple jab. Keeps popping that jab out. Rodriguez tries to come in behind her. The jab with the right hand. You can tell Dunn. Rodriguez is uh doesn't have the speed, doesn't have the speed that Dervinson has, or appears to have at this moment. Rodriguez does not look like he has a fluidity. He's just trying to trying to cut the ring off. Devins is going to his left and right, keeping off the ropes. And we're only in the second round. There's only six rounds here, and this is not a uh, you can't afford to give too many rounds away when you're fighting a, a very short fight like this. And in, in this stage of his career, I think he's already got one loss. One loss or one draw. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I forget things about these fighters. He's got uh He's got one draw, and a loss would not look good at on his record at this uh, at this point. My sister Rock Chuck, how are you? Good to see you there. Appreciate it. Much love. Much love. <coughs> Rodriguez, weight combination missed by a mile. Rodriguez is trying to corner him. He's trying to get uh, Davison in the corner. Davison is just he's circling. He's going right to left. And he's uh he's not letting himself get trapped there. Rodriguez like Rodriguez tried to throw a big right hand, missed. And then Rodriguez is trying to trying to get him, trying to do what uh what I said he has to do. He has to get him in the corner and he has to unload. Dervinson does not want to not want to allow him to do that. Rodriguez is stalking him from the center of the ring, but uh he's not not very uh not very useful in the center of the ring like that. He's got to he's gotta get Dervinson against the ropes, he's gotta cut the ring off. He's gonna bang that body, otherwise he's gonna get picked up on the outside, which it looks like it's happening right now. End of the second round. You've got my man Stitch Duran as his cut man, one of your best cut men out there today. Mm 
you're showing some highlights of uh, Emmanuel Navarrete and Oscar Valdez. Navarrete uh, beat him up that night. But this is this is going to be interesting. You know, Valdez was accused of um, of using uh, what was it? Fentolin, fentamine, fentamine. I believe it is. It's um, it's a, it's a diet pill, and it's it's a it's a naturally occurring substance in the body, and it's found in green tea. And they were saying he was uh, you know, Valdez's corner said he never took any um, he never took any uh any weight cutting drugs it was in the green tea and i believe they let that fight go on i uh, it, it was in arizona too of all places it was on a reservation and um you know the ugly game of bodybuilding a lot of, of uh, boxing a lot of drugs in here that's why i say bodybuilding and boxing it's almost like um you know it's crazy man you know they people are abusing abusing substances to uh to enhance their careers they don't realize how dangerous these things are in their bodies and the effects they're going to have once their careers are over and plus the it, it, it's it's just fuck, a fucked up thing with the sport ghost one two three salute man rolling with the punches bro salute my brother roland roland's always taking a hard time when he goes goes over to the fucking tavern man roland's a tough guy he don't let nothing bother him Bounces off them like water off a duck's back. Speaking of water, make sure you're getting your your, your supply of water. Uh, it, it's it's a naturally occurring substance in the body, and it can be taken like a PD, PED, just like testosterone, Daryl. Testosterone is naturally occurring, but you can uh, you can uh, use synthetic testosterone, and um, it's really hard to tell the tell which one is which once it gets into the endocrine system. And this is what um, what Valdez said. He said he never took the, uh, the fentanyl. And, and and you remember there was a there was a, a, a over the over the uh, counter drug over the counter diet aid a while ago. It was called um, Fenfen. It was fentanyl and fent fentanyl and uh, and fentanyl. Anyway, it's not it's not legal anymore. But it, but but it's this it's this diet pill that they accuse Valdez of. And uh, and like I said, man. The uh, the commission on the Indian reservation somehow they uh, it, it got, got overlooked and the fight continued. The fight went on, so it's uh it's crazy out there, man. And Daryl, salute my brother Daryl, man. Thank you for coming by. Thank you all for coming by. I appreciate it, man. And we are in uh we're in the third round of this middleweight fight, and uh, I still like Davison, man. I like the way he's bouncing on his toes. He's using that jab. He's scoring it when he throws it. Rodriguez is just trying to get, get in. His, his punches look pretty sloppy to me over here, man. He's punching He's punching on the uphill. Oh, he just got nailed when he was coming in, man. A beautiful check hook. He didn't... He didn't uh, he took that punch real well. I hope they show that in slow motion after, man, because... Uh, Davison just uh, just timed him perfectly as he was coming in with that beautiful left hook. But anyway, man, I think Davison is uh Davison is um is doing his thing up here, man. I think he's I think he might be uh, pulling an upset. You never know with house fighters until the until the um until the scores are red, man. I've seen it happen too many times. The house fighter always seems to get the uh, always seems to get the nod in a close fight. So we'll see we'll see what happens, man. Let's see, man. We doing bare knuckle fighting, man. Ah, uh, ah, uh, man. I, I, I can't show those things, uh, because they, they, they give me strikes when I do that. Sometimes me and Tim get together and we do that, but uh, see, bare knuckles getting real popular now, so they're on YouTube and they keep an eye on for guys like us who sh used to show these fights. A year ago, we could do that because it wasn't popular. Now, man. They uh they nail you right in the middle of the right in the middle of the show and they shut you down. So I don't even want to take a chance doing that. Um, let's see, man. I buy the gummies from Colorado Springs in my med license. I move out under 50 milligram. Hey, man, I got some gummies here. These these are 300 milligrams. The the, the package contains 3,000 milligrams. Each gummy is 300, man. 
way too way too strong just for just for me to take all. I've never taken a whole one yet. Me and the old lady, I cut them in half. She takes half, and I, and I take half. But anyway, we're back in the action again. M MPR seventy six, bro. How you doing, man? I see you all over the place. Let me uh, make sure. As soon as, as soon as this fight's over, I'll make sure I give you a wrench, brother. Appreciate the sub and appreciate you coming in here. Oh, there we go, man. Rodriguez is trying to land those wide punches on the outside. If he lands one, this the uh, this fight could be could have a, a different uh, a different um, it would be in a different place. But right now, I'm seeing I'm seeing Derbyson using that jab, and it looks like uh, he's got uh, Rodriguez's face pretty well, pretty much busted up too, landing that straight jab. Rodriguez looks a little bit hesitant to come inside now. And Rodriguez with that overhand right is what he wants. I don't see too many of those punches landing because uh, there's some very, very good footwork. Moving side to side, staying off the ropes, keeping that jab very, very important. Keeping that jab pumped in there. And he just got inside for a second. That's what he has to do. On the outside, he's getting picked apart. When he gets inside, that's his only hope. We're in the fourth round now, and he hasn't gotten inside yet. Big, big right hand by, by Daverson. Daverson is just pumping that jab out there, man. Field day with this overhand right. Mm. We might see a house fighter uh, have a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a uh, upsetting of the apple cart, as they say. But you never know, man. Rodriguez has got a lot of pop trying to land that trying to land those big overhand rights, man. Rodriguez is, is 10 and 0. He's got eight knockouts, one draw. So majority of his fights have ended with a knockout. Trying to cut that ring off. Derbyson is just not not uh, not going according to plan. He's got him on the ropes now. He's big, big, uh, big hooks and big, big crosses by by Rodriguez. That's not where Derrickson wants to be, but he's covering up now. He's against the ropes and covering up. If Rodriguez has any chance, this is what he's got to do. Now he's got to get inside. He's got to unload. Boom! Left hand, right hook. Rodriguez times and coming off. Night. What a slugfest we got going on here, man. Woo! Good shit, baby. End of the round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we want to see here, man. Cue ball out there, man. Salute. P, how you doing, brother? Rock Chalk. Brother Bruce, I'm watching for free. Freeland would be it. Nah, man, I can't I can't do it. I, I, I like boxing much more. Too, too much more over here, man. Ryan Hotkin, what do you think, Ryan? He's definitely having problems closing the difference. What do I see in him? I saw MRP. You make sure I give you your um your certifications, man. You don't want nobody timing you out. I got a lot of a lot of these cats in here. They uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You give them a little bit of power, and I like to put people in a, a that fucking 80, 81 minute, eighty seven minute, whatever it is. It times you out for the whole day. It's worse than blocking you. At least when you're blocked, we can unblock you. And here we go, man. The uh. Rodriguez does not look very confident in his corner. I believe this is the last round, the sixth round that we're, we're, uh, we're starting. No, I guess it's not the sixth round because they would have touched gloves. This is the, uh, the fifth round. You see, I, I watch things in a, it's like boxing's my favorite. Then, um, then I like the bare knuckle. Then I like the UFC. Then the women's boxing. It's kind of like uh, the way things on. Yeah, Rodriguez is. Uh, Rodriguez has got to move. He's got to put some points on the on the, on the scorecard. It looks like he's just getting picked apart on the outside. I don't know if uh, I don't know if I'm not seeing what the judges are seeing, but I'm seeing a clear a clear um, decision victory right now for for Derbison. Sandy. You don't have to call Sammy over at the tavern. I'll call him Sandy. I always like, I, I like different things, different names. <laughs> Just different things. Sammy, ah, there's a million Sammy's out there. 
Pat Rodriguez is trying to get him against the ropes, man. He, he must his corner must have pulled him. This is time to uh you need some points, my man. You gotta you gotta get in there. You gotta uh you gotta earn the respect of this boy. Oh, he gets good nailed with a nice nice counter punch. Get that toka two ready to go here. And Rodriguez is uh, is chasing him around now. Davison probably a little bit tired. Maybe he's saving something up for that last round, man. Maybe he's gonna come on like hellfire in that last round. He's starting to throw a lot of jabs right now. Man, yeah, he's um he's beating he's beating Rodriguez to the punch in every instance over here, man. He's uh he's definitely the uh yeah, four to one, yeah, baby. Hey my brother Ricky E, what's up, my man? Appreciate you stopping in. Davidson popping that jab, man. Hey, Bob Aaron might notice him. And like I said earlier, man, Rodriguez has already got a fight scheduled for next month. So um, apparently they didn't take Davidson uh, too seriously. And uh, this is what happens when you overlook fights. Look at um, look at freaking Zoo, man. He's overlooking uh, he's look, overlooking Fandora. He's already uh, having to decide who he's going to take on. Is it going to be Bud Crawford or is it going to be Errol Spence? Good card here tonight, though, man. I got to give it the top rank. They're definitely making my Friday night. I wasn't going to come on till eight thirty, and I saw the action already happen. And I said, I cut it to eight o'clock, and I cut it to seven thirty, and I said, Fuck, man. Uh, live on the air. I appreciate everybody that's in here, man. Make sure you hit that like button. Then that's who, this is the guy that I turned it on for to see, man. They're showing Ricardo Torres, Richard Torres. Heavyweight, everybody says he's too small to be a heavyweight. He's 236 pounds right now, man. How much bigger do you want him? That's bigger than George Foreman was in, in, in his heyday. You know, Ricardo Torres, Richard Torres. I don't know why I'm calling him Ricardo. Man. Maybe, maybe that's what his parents call him. He's got the, uh, he's got the Olympic uh, symbol tattooed on his on his uh, left shoulder. Getting himself mentally psyched for the game. And the guy that he's fighting, man, the um, the dude that he's fighting is a uh, is a cat that's got a lot of experience, man. His name is Don Hazenwood. He's a big guy, 276 and a half pounds. And we'll go over his record after, man. I don't want to um, I don't want to get sidetracked right now. We got a, a decent fight that we're watching him, and we could be watching a top rank uh, top rank fighter, Sergio Rodriguez. He's uh, he's in for uh, the fight of his life against Sandy Derbison, man couple of middleweights and this is the start of the um the sixth and final round and here we go and man i think um i think what's gonna happen is i think uh ricardo perez I, I think sergio rodriguez is gonna start throwing some wide punches to try to land some heavy heavy bombs and he and he's gonna leave himself open for some counters and we may see uh you know we may see him hurt in this round believe me he's not gonna uh, he's not gonna win this fight doing what he did to the previous five rounds so uh so let's see what uh, let's see what my man Sergio. I had a good friend of mine named Sergio. We used to call him the Sarge. Oh, there he goes, man. Yep, he's trying to trying to unload those wide punches, man. Derbison should should counter counter and time him. And I think he can really uh, put a definite definite exclamation point on this fight. He's keeping that right hand cocked. He's he's trying to time. He's trying to time that that overhand right of bomb. Rodriguez. He's setting a little trap. Moving backwards, man. Oh, Rodriguez just tried a big left hook from the outside. He's trying to whew, a, a, a left uppercut from the outside. That is the way to get knocked out. Man, he's throwing these wide, wide punches. I think Dervish should really, um, really do some pinpointing right here. His best chance to, uh, to hurt Rodriguez. Rodriguez throwing some really amateur like punches.
Mr. Rodriguez is trying to trying to get him into the corner. He's trying to um, he's just he, he just does not have. Uh, now he's got. Now he just landed a nice combination on the inside. What he should have done earlier. But I think it's a sign of too little, too late. In the last forty seconds of the fight. And see right there, he should have walked Derbison into the corner, but he's probably face is banged up. Um, trying try some big punches on the outside. None of them are landing. Desperation, hail mary punches. They oh, there he now he's beautiful shots in the corner. Now this is what he wanted to do. I can see why he why he's a top rank fighter. Oh, good stuff on the inside, man. Way too little, way too late. I think Sergio Rodriguez is going to suffer his first loss. If he doesn't, it's going to be a shame, man. My man, Brian Hawking, who's uh, an official judge. Hey, my man, I'm three finest, bro. Shout out to you, man. Appreciate you coming in here, man. Thank you. You dig? I definitely dig, man. Friday night fights, man. <laughs> this is where I want to be. Oh, they're showing... Um, what are they showing? I, I don't know what they were showing, man. They were showing um, maybe a, a four-round fight. Oh, yeah, yeah. This was These were ones were coming on earlier. I was setting up the show, man. This was this um, this dude, Art Barrera Jr. Um, amazing amateur career. Threw a picture-perfect left hook. He knocked out this kid named Soto beautifully. A lot a lot of knockouts earlier in the uh, in, on the con. You know, you had the... Uh, you got the, these these house fighters, man. Top rank is showcasing these guys, and the um they're showing the Emiliano Vargas decision. It's a fairly close fight, but uh, unanimous. And now, I guess this will be the first upset on our card tonight. Interesting. Let's see if it is an upset, man. You know, I'm even when I sometimes when I see these fights, the judges have different scoring than I do. So we shall see. We shall see. My friend Brian Hotkin, quarter two for Durbinson. Let's see. Where are they at? They're in, the, they're in Arizona. What's the name of the place that they're fighting at? It's called the um, Desert Diamond Arena in Glendale. And I, if they don't raise Dervis in hand, then this is going to be a weight robbery in my in my scorecard. Oh, come on. Oh, Sergio Rodriguez got his hand raised in victory. Can you believe it? Can you believe it, man? Yes, I can believe it. This is this is boxing today, man. When you're a house fighter, you've already got you've already two to nothing. When you get in the ring, and it's only a six rounder. Uh if anybody thinks that was a fair decision, put a one in the chat. That was a, that was terrible, man. Roland, what did you think, man? I thought that was a terrible decision. This is a, uh, this is the this is what boxing is today, man. This is this is what this is what the, the business of boxing. When, when Bob Arum's got a fighter and he wants to build up his record, it's on an undercard. I'm sure that uh, he wasn't uh, planning on a on it being controversial here. Horrible, horrible decision. Good fight, Uncle D, but the horrible decision, though. I, if you ask me, I I, uh, I thought the fight was fairly interesting. The decision horrendous. Thirty-three. I guess that's when they peak right now. You know, that's um, it's funny, but uh, you know, 
I, I, I just can't, I can't help to go back to Sugar Ray Leonard and Hearns, 23 and, and 25 respectively, when they had the, one of the most amazing fights in boxing history. The fire stick. I never had, I never even saw a fire stick. I got the, I, I just go on, I go on the, uh, the internet, man. It's, I have like probably five different sites that I can watch boxing, boxing on. And it's, it's not just pay per views, it's all boxing. Whatever, if it's on a regular ESPN or if it's on, if it's on a, an app or if it's a pay per view, these sites that I go on, man, strike out, strike out sports. Um, I don't even know the names of them, but they, they, they're all in my, in my memories. And see, last week, last week they beat us though. Last week we couldn't watch the Christian Hammer and the, um, the Dillian White fight. You remember that, bro? It was nuts. I was here. I had 5,000 people come into my, my, my show that day. I had 5,000 views. I must have gained 20, 30 subscribers. But um, we couldn't find a fight, and I tried everywhere. I was trying, damn, I was trying um, Liz Wig. And uh, they, could, they got the craziest names for some reason. It wasn't on the crack streams, none of those things. It was really weird. They're blocking the fire stick from June from uploading apps. I, I don't know how they do that, man. All I know is the uh, the sites they have out here, they're just like the porn sites, you know, same freaking thing. You, you, I guess back in the day you paid money for that, but it's on the internet, and uh, the internet is undefeated. Abraham Supernova, they're showing um, some of that fight we saw not long ago. Was that... Um, of Shaki Foster and Supernova. That was a good fight, too. But, uh, yeah, I think the uh, next fight on the card, the next fight that we're going to see is, let me let me look on the schedule. And it's going to be the Richard Therese, the heavyweight fight, man. Let's, um, let us check, um, let us check some of their, their records here, man. Richard Therese, we, we all know Richard Therese as the Olympian. Back in uh, 2020, is that when the Olympics were? He's 8 no right now. Let's see when the when was the Olympics. The Olympics were in 2021 in Jalalaw. He lost the unanimous decision to Jalalaw in the uh, in the finals. But now he's a pro, and people are saying he's too small to be a pro. I mean, dude, I, I told you today, he's weighing 136. That's more than Ali weighed. That's like um, just like Ray Mercer used to weigh when he was in his prime. You know, that's not a small heavyweight. Compared to these monsters, and even this dude that he's fighting, Don Hainsworth, he's, uh, he weighs in at 276 and a half pounds. So... Um, you know, we're going to see what he does. Uh, Torres, 8-0 with eight knockouts on his record. That's, that's uh, can't get much better than that to open up your career. This guy, Donald Hainsworth, 18-8-1 with 16 knockouts. So he's one of those guys that either, he's either going to kill you or you're going to kill him. He's been stopped five times. And he's been stopped by... Dempsey McKean, we've seen Dempsey McKean before. We've been stopped by Simon Keen, another one we've seen before. Guido Vianelli, all these um all these white uh, European heavyweights, and he's been stopped by them. He's been stopped by Zhili Zhang. And he's been stopped by Brian Jennings. So I mean he's got a ton of experience in here. So we're gonna see if uh we're gonna see if um if Richard Torres is the real deal, because this kid that he's fighting, he's, he's, his resume blows Torres's resume away. So this is going to be um, this is going to be very interesting to watch. You know, Torres, he's uh, I guess he's the American hope. You know, we're all saying that we don't. America has no heavyweights. You know, Richard Torres, that's uh, that's the dudes from uh, from California. Spanish American ancestry, no doubt, but uh, but he's born in California, lives in California. Tulane, Tulare, 
So that California. So let's see, man. Let's get behind Richard Tarazzo. You know, we that's a name we leave out. Everybody talks about Big Baby Anderson. It's our only hope in the heavyweight division, man. We got Richard Torres. And uh, now we're gonna get to see what he's what he's got here, man. He's taking on Donald Hainsworth. A heavyweight, a lot of experience, a lot more experience than Torres has, man. He's got a record of 18 and 8 in one draw. Torres took on Curtis Hopper, a cat that we've all seen on uh we've seen him on Team Combat League, we've seen him on on ESPN fights, you know, that's the dude who walked out when he was going to fight um, uh, Effie Ajagba. And uh, he, he, as soon as the bell rang, meep, right back to the dressing room. Rascal, how we doing, my brother? You can't find the fight. Of course I can find the fight. No, I couldn't find the, uh, I couldn't find the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the Christian Hammer and the, and the Dillian White fight, but nobody could. Nobody could find that fight. I still haven't seen it yet. It's, I think it's only taken with some cat sitting there with a, with an iPhone. That was the most impossible. It was a, a trash fight, and it was the hardest fight to find in internet history. Everybody was looking for it. Like I said, I had, I had five thousand people that came into my room seeing if I, if I had it, and I, I tried everywhere. I spent three hours going from site to site, and I couldn't get there. But this Donald Hainsworth, big, big dude, man. Like I said, 276 pounds. That's that's WWE big. Perez looks in very good shape for a heavyweight. Uh, I think Therese, 24 years old, six foot two, 236.6. So man, I'll tell you, this is uh this is try if you in the 70s, this this would be considered a monster heavyweight. This guy would be considered like George Foreman. But uh, this is the this is the 25th century, and he's considered a relatively small heavyweight. We got top bro, eight knockouts, eight wins. He's worth his Ben knockout before. That's what we're expecting. Let's see how many rounds it's going to take. But you never know, man. We never know with heavyweights. Hainsworth does not look in bad shape. He doesn't have a huge gut. He doesn't have the big tits. He's uh. He looks like he's got more muscle than jiggle going on. So we're going to see what's going to happen here, man. Here we go, getting ready for the first round. Richard Torres, Donald Hainsworth, heavyweight action. Are you ready? Ding, ding, here we go. Torres starts fast. Oh, he's already beautiful body shot, man. Drop that right hand to the body, throwing the left hand upstairs. Looks like he wants to go home early tonight. Ainsworth shooting out that long jab. Perez going around, looking for angles. Nice left hook upstairs. Shoot. Oh, big right, big right to the body. Perez is uh, shooting, shooting that left hand high, shooting that jab up, trying to follow with the right hand, follow with the right hand, yeah, landed one, landed another one, spun, spun Hazeworth around, Hazeworth trying his left hook, gets counted, Perez going downstairs, he's got Hazeworth in the corner, Perez, nice triple jab, Therese is trying to catch him coming forward. Therese unloading, man, throwing a lot of punches. Hainsworth is hoping that Therese punches himself out, not punches him out. Looks like Therese is landing a lot of those punches. Hainsworth tries to get him in the corner. Therese spins him around, tangs him, ties him up. The referee breaks him up. Therese, once again, going downstairs and upstairs, throwing a lot of punches. Moving those hands really fast. Every time, every time um, Hainsworth tries to throw a big right hand, Torres holds him on the inside. Beautiful shots by Torres. Bounce Hainsworth head back. 
Oh, just nail them. Don't go left hook. You got Hainsworth in trouble. He's, he's opening up on Hainsworth right now. Hainsworth is covering up. He's got he's got uh, 50 seconds to go. Can you put him away? So, oh, beautiful right hand. This fight's over. That's it. Ref's seen enough. Torres Jr., first round knockout, first round TKO. He looked pretty good, man. He looked pretty good against a seasoned veteran. Uh, he's, this is only his ninth fight. Once again, another another climb up that ladder. Yeah, Ricky, there's really no highlights. I saw I saw a few of them. Like they're kind of low lights, man. Um, but uh, it, it was impossible to find it that day. Nobody nobody could show that fight. Nobody could even commentate on it. I mean, I, we don't show the fights. Obviously, we we'll get slapped down. But uh, I couldn't even do this with that with that fight that day. Hey, my brother Demetrius Bright, man. Shout out to you, man. Peace. Torres, he was aggressive when he had to be. I mean, um, Hainsworth was, was the size of Riddick Bow. But for somehow, I just don't see Richard Torres doing that to Riddick Bow. We'll see as he moves up in competition. We'll see what Bob Aarons does, does for him in his next fight. You know, he's had him very active. We see Torres on a lot of the oh, very fast hand speed. Very accurate, a lot of power in those punches. He uh, he kept it under control. He didn't get didn't get excited. I mean, didn't didn't just uh, you know throw caution to the wind. They were all very calculating shots. Once again, another victory, another knockout for Richard Torres, undefeated heavyweight prospect. The reggae in the background. I got this copyright free music that I play. Got to have something going on behind it. You can't just, the silence, silence is golden, but not when I'm doing a show by myself. And the stuff I want to play, can't do that either. Trying to keep it legit over here on, on YouTube. But Torres, man, came in and did his job. First round knockout, the show goes on. We don't have to sit around and, and see it. And, any uh, any boring stuff? Everybody says heavyweights were boring. Come on, was that boring? <laughs> Not in my books. There you go, Roland. And, um, another American. There we go. That's what we, we need. American heavyweights. The heavyweights are controlled by by foreigners. Man, look at the uh, the two champs. We got a, a, a British gypsy and we got a um, a Ukraine. We've got the, all the contenders, you know, Zhili Zhang, Parker, Joshua. The uh, the Americans are in need of heavyweights. What happened to my my star? Yeah, yes, here we go. If if you if you just put this on, it says, are you? Do you want to continue watching? Yes, I do. Press that. <laughs> so we get back to it. So, um, Perez is being interviewed right now. He's probably going to say uh, what he's looking forward to doing. I'd like to see him go to Saudi and uh, a little too early for his career, but just keep fighting on a regular basis. Keep getting those victories. Improve your competition. This kid, this kid you fought today, man, Don Hainsworth, has been in there with a lot of a lot of prospects, a lot of real tough heavyweights. So you're just another one of them. They're showing Sanisa Strada coming into the ring. I keep forgetting that it was a women's fight on the, on the card today. But hey, man, that's like wrestling. When the women's cards came on, that's when you usually went and took a piss and made a sandwich. So uh, we're not going to do that tonight. No sandwiches. No Try to avoid late night eating. That's my gain weight. See, if I if I just have what I regularly eat, I eat like um, two uh, two solid meals, a liquid meal, maybe a maybe a few a few uh, nuts or something for a snack. But if I eat late at night, that's when I, that's when I won't lose weight. That's when I'll gain weight. If I can maintain my diet, I maintain my weight, even lose a little bit when I, when I get more active as the weather warms up. But um, it's all—it's in timing. Timing is very important, especially the older you get. 
your metabolism slows down when you sleep. Your body cannot burn calories. When I was younger, my body burned calories when I was asleep. But as I'm older, the metabolism shuts way down. But I used to wake up in the middle of the night and do a protein shake back in my back in the day. You know, you had to always stay in an anabolic state. If you weren't in an anabolic state, you were in a catabolic state. So, so eating is very important. You, know, you can't uh, you can't train your way into a into a good physique you know, it's off a diet. So it's key. And uh, I'm sure that um, I'm sure that these guys like Ricardo, Richard, I keep calling him Ricardo. I don't know. I guess that's probably his parents. Yeah, Ricardo, Ricardo, over here. Man. It's not that I don't like them rolling. It's just that I like men boxing better. I like I prefer prefer males fighting. I don't like to see the women get beat up. You know, it's, when it's an even fight and they're both um, they're both exchanging, they're both getting their fair, their share of punches. Good. A lot of these women, fuck, fuck. a lot of these women matches now. You got your star, your A side, and then they'll bring in some housewife. They got a lot of a freaking Valley Fitness Studio. You know, and I've seen too many of them stretched out like that. And other times I've seen. Um, Lower quality women fighters just get their faces busted open. That's just not for me. You know, I, don't even, I wouldn't even shoot a bird. I, I don't like to see uh, I don't like to see people suffering. Men fighting, hey, that's not suffering. After all, I don't even feel it. You get, you get some of them shots to the face. Like my buddy Vinny Bengazi was here the other night with Witherspoon. He talking about the, his fighting days. He says he had to catch a few in the face to really, to really start feeling uncomfortable. Jeff Lucietta, my brother. Shout out to you, man. Thank you much for coming by. I'm sure you're watching these fights, bro. What do you think? You think that last decision was uh, terrible? You think Sergio Rodriguez won that fight, Jeff? Because I didn't. Well, you know, I, I like those 10 2 minute runs, so it makes you go by faster. Um, even when they have the, uh, the team combat league. I was watching it last night, and they have a couple. They have a couple of women in there, and they their fights are only two minutes too. And Team Combat League, if you're not if you're not familiar with it, it's these teams that get together and they fight one round. Every every fighter boxes one round, and that's it. You know they'll come back for the you know if they win they'll come back for the money rounds afterwards. But it's, you, you don't fight three rounds. You don't fight two rounds. It's one round. And um. And the uh, even the women, they were they were two minutes last night. A lot of knockouts too. It was interesting. A lot of fun watching it. Once again, and there was some kid on here tonight. If you look, if you look on Box Rec now, you know how they have the um, they have the uh, they have the, uh, the amateur record and the pro record, and then it'll say the PCL. Like, what? And they got the Team Combat League. There's a lot of these fighters are doing that. You know, it's it's equivalent to getting to getting good sparring. You get paid well, and it doesn't count on your professional record. So they um, so the uh, they're keeping records of it. So other fight, it's great, man. I can I can give boxing rec credit, you know. Even though a lot of them are they wrong, a lot of those records are wrong. You know, it's free, and it's not bad. You know, back when I was uh, in my day, to get the record, you have to get the ring record book. Or you have to look in an encyclopedia and it was months, if not years, off. I mean, this is this is fucking uh this is really every boxing fan thing to have this at your disposal. Shit, if I had this stuff at my disposal, 
30 years ago, Howard Cosell would have had to move over and make room for Bruce Cass. Because um, you know, what we have, what we can do with this stuff, our backgrounds, uh, what we have at our disposal, look up records, watch them, previous fights on other screens, going into YouTube and bring them up. I mean, it's uh, amazing what we can do, what we can do now to you know, get, these, uh, get these podcasts likable, enjoyable, and fun but for all of us. They're showing the um, Liam Wilson right now. Liam Wilson's our undefeated fighter. He's fighting in the main event. So, uh, I mean, we got we still have quite a few fights to go, man. We're going to have the uh, Lindolfo Delgado and Carlos Sanchez. I believe that's the next fight, the Junior Wolfman fight. Junior Wolfman, that's the hottest division out there. Right? A, lot of, a lot of action going on at 140. Lindolfo Delgado, 19-0 with 14 knockouts. Highly ranked, ranked number 36 in the world as a uh, as a super lightweight. He's fighting out of Mexico, and his opponent tonight is Paulo Sanchez, 25 and two, 19 knockouts. He's been stopped once in his career, and that loss was to Pedro Campa. Pedro Campa, that was a. Uh, that was in 2022, a year ago, March 19th, almost a year to the day, 10 years to the 10 days to the to the fucking day, he was knocked out by Pedro Campos, a PKO in the third round, and he lost to Steve Claggett between that time, 10 round decision. So uh, top ranks, uh, you know, top rank knows who they're who they're bringing in here. He's coming off a of victory. Uh, unanimous decision, eight round unanimous decision on Carlos Diaz. And uh, he's taking on uh, tonight, man, Carlos Sanchez, Lindolfo Delgado, the, uh, the top ranked fighter, man. Yeah, nah. <laughs> Carol, you got too much out there, man. I don't know what to say when I hear some of this shit out there, but I appreciate it. Liam Wilson, no, no go, Roly. What do you think, man? It's probably going to be an interesting fight. Liam Wilson's undefeated. Valdez, man, he's been around. He, he fought, um, he fought freaking uh, Devin Haney. The man's got a lot of experience. Man, I love this Friday night at the fights, man. I got my people over here with me. I appreciate you, cats. I got some fine herb. I got ice cold water. My lovely wife is already making Z's in there. I told her, do me a favor. I said, make sure you leave the show on. That way I get to watch hours. And that's important. That's all I need right now. I got plenty of, not plenty of stuff. I always, always try to get more. And that's why I appreciate. I appreciate you cats subbing to me. But, um, but the watch hours. Because, see, I used to do a lot of stuff. that I have to take them down. I was copywritten stuff. So I couldn't get in. I couldn't get the watch hours. Lately, I've been trying to play it by their rules. And it's okay. I mean, you know, copyrighted music in the background. I'm copyrighted music in the background. And uh, keeping the swearage to a minimal. Not really flaunting my, um, my, my little buddy here. Not that I, not that I will not. Hey, my sister Rock Chuck, I appreciate that. Gil Cole's my brother. Thank you much for coming over here, man. Gil Cole's, man. A man who knows his boxing, he don't go where the bullshit goes. He goes where the people who know, people in the know is where Gil Cole's going. And uh, much gratitude, my brother. Get up. The thing about this token, man, you gotta make sure that make sure that the the stem is uh doesn't get clogged up. It doesn't a lot, but just a little bit. Because the stuff I smoke is really gooey. But uh 
That's why he, that's only used here. When out and about and on the road, the vape, the, the fantastic H I T, high in thought, great goodness. I love these suckers, man. Love them. They last for a week. It was 40 bucks. Um, extremely high, pure concentrate in there. And, uh, man, yeah. I never get into these things until it's about maybe a month or so ago, maybe a little bit longer. But now, man, they're part of my essential smoking. I wouldn't leave home without them. So much fun. I can go out and just do a couple of, couple of tokes. I went to a place and be nice and high and fucking goof on people and enjoy the experience and enjoy the food and everything else, man. Highly recommend it for the, uh, for the 21st century weed head out there. Thing lights up like that. We can Madame Maru's pinball machine. And you can recharge them. Yeah, they're a fantastic. Whoever, whoever invented these, man, we got some highly educated, um, highly educated THC PhDs out there. And they are, they're, they're keeping it going for us. Always a lot of water. Always, always drink your water, man. You know, you've got to, uh, you got to keep those, keep those organs hydrated. You got to keep that, that body, those muscles, that skin. You want to keep plenty of water, plenty of moisture inside the body. But they're talking to Liam Wilson. Liam Wilson's in the back right now. Oh, Liam, Liam's got two defeats. I thought he was undefeated. What do I know? 13 and 2. So maybe Oscar Valdez is the, Oscar Valdez is definitely the top ranked fighter, the house fighter. Or maybe Liam is too. I don't know, man. I don't know who's gonna win this fight. What are the odds on it? Anybody know? Let's check them out. Odds on Liam Wilson. Oscar Valdez. All right, let's see. Oscar Valdez is the minus three seventy five favorite. William Wilson is plus 275. Wow. <laughs> Therese is a minus 4,000. And uh, Hainsworth, he, he went off at a plus 1,500. So, I mean, those were some serious, serious underdogs here. But, um, but Oscar Valdez is, is, is uh, heavily favored here. So, what that is, what that means, I don't even know, man. I don't even know what the, uh, the payoff is. I know the, uh, the SR, the save of my ad block, and I'm not even going to go to this. Like, I'm talking. The save of the ad blocker could give them a, a chance to, um, to infect my computer with some of their nasty ads. I, I go on enough sites of nasty ads. I mean, any more ads. So we'll get back to the, we'll get back to the, the fights at hand here, man. Like I said, we're getting ready for the, um, Delgado and Sanchez. I believe that that shouldn't be the next fight in the card. They're either going to go right to the spot. I doubt it. It's only, it's only nine o'clock. It's, it's early. On this Good Friday, man, one of the holiest days in the Christian religion. This is the day that our Lord Jesus Christ suffered on the cross. He will be reborn three days from today, Easter Sunday. But, um, you know, when I was a kid, this was a this was a strict holiday. <laughs> Did you go to school on on uh, Good Friday? Did you? I think you had the day off from school. And the bars would not serve booze. Because when I was a kid, alcohol uh, restaurants it was different than it is today. There were bars on every corner of my town, and it was normal to drink during the day. You know, you got out of work, even like at lunch. At lunch, you could uh, you could you could hammer a beer down, two beers down. No big deal. You know, that's why you get the, uh, the, uh, 
the three martini lunch. That's with the uh, the salesman. You know, the, uh, I dare say doctors, but like I said, man, alcohol was so accepted back then. But on Good Friday of all days, for three hours between 12 and 3, the bars, not that you were forbidden, you just did it because, you know, you wanted to be blessed when they had the festivals and everything else. Because Catholic churches, that's what they do. They have the, the Feast of St. Joseph and the Feast of St. Mary and the St. Anthony's Feast. And they have the carnivals that they have in their, on their parishes and they take, make a lot of money. I mean, they kind of ran the town back then, back in the 60s and the early 70s. That, you know, now it's totally different. But uh, like I said, on, on today, on Good Friday, if you if you were in a bar, that was it. Noontime came, and and unless you were an alcoholic or you know, unless you knew the bartender or something, that's it. No booze was served, and and the drunks would be pissed off and it would be, hey man, it's, you know, it's Jesus suffered. Go to church and do the Stations of the Cross. We'll say a rosary. This is this was the uh, the anniversary of our uh, of, of Good Friday, and, and that's that's today. Right now, Jesus is not is dead. He's, he's up in heaven. He's he's uh, rejoicing with his Father. And I don't know what they were doing, but getting ready to, to rise from the dead on Easter Sunday morning. And extremely holy day, Passover, I believe, ends tomorrow. You know, it's Ramadan. It's, all, all the faiths are celebrating this time of year. Very religious time of year. Me, boxing, my religion. I love Jesus. I love God. And, you know, that's number one. But man, I'm here on earth. I love boxing. And having it on a Friday night, ain't much better that can happen to me right now, man. I've got a stream that hasn't been failing me at all. It's ESPN Plus. It's on. I think I got it on the strike, strikeout dots. Strike out that CC, I believe. It's coming in perfectly. I got the Toka too. I had a great meal. Place cold water. It's uh hey, I didn't run out of money this month. Tomorrow's the uh, the first of the today's Friday and the 29th. So the first is on is on Sunday. So I'll get my I'll get my check. In fact, my check's probably in the bank now. I didn't even realize it. Usually when the when the first falls on a weekend. The money's in there, but I don't even know how to find out. I, I leave that to my wife. So anyway, we made it through another month. Thank the Lord. We're not broke, and uh, we got boxing on here, man. They're showing the featherweight world champ, featherweight world champions: Raymond Ford, Ray Vargas, Rafael and Espinosa. And I didn't catch the last one. But anyway, man, I always I loved the featherweights when I was when I was growing up, man. Look at the damn moth lights. Come on, come on, come on, a little closer, a little closer. Got my microphone. I got him. History. He got away, son of a bitch. Unbelievable. I got him. <laughs> now I'm going to have to kill you. Sorry. Sorry, little moth. But anyway, man, what was I saying before I was so rudely interrupted? Oh, yeah, the featherweights, man. The featherweights, man. I remember the featherweights, man. My favorite one back in the day was Danny Little Red Lopez. He got beat by the great Salvador Sanchez. Man, they had that fantastic battle of the little giants, Sanchez and Lufredo Gomez. That was what grew the featherweights, man. We saw the, you know, the uh, Juan Cortes. Just so many, man. So many. Rocky Lockridge. Just, I mean, just a great, great division. And, um, and now we have um, Luis Alberto Lopez. We have um, we have quite a few featherweights. I can't even think of the champs right now. That's how that's how much of a, that's how good my mind is at remembering um, champions right now. But um, it's a it's a great division. 125 pounders. And some of the best, man. That's the division of Willie Pep. That's the division of Sandy Sadler. The, uh, the first title of, uh, of uh, Henry Armstrong was featherweight. You know, featherweight's a uh, it's it's a money division. Small guys, but uh, but some of the greatest. Jimmy McLaren. Uh -huh. 
Bobby Chacon, Ruben Alvarez, and the, some of the bantamweights, the bantamweights from New York, the 118 pounders. Luis Alberto Lopez is the IBF featherweight champion. That's what they're talking about. All right, we, we just saw a fight recently, but um, they just so see fighters today, man. They're just not recognizable as the fighters we were back in the day. If anybody knew Luis Alberto Sanchez was when he, when he passed away, man. It was national news, man. six o'clock news. But um, Luis Alberto Lopez, you know, only us hard callers know who he is. That's why they say the face of boxing. You know, I say, you, know, you, you look over there on that, on that Wheaties box. You got Muhammad Ali on there. That's the face of boxing. There ain't no more faces of boxing. You know, the face of boxing is going to be known by everybody, not just the boxing fans, but by the, by the world, by, by the people who knew Mike Tyson. They knew who he was. They knew who Ali, of course. Sugar Ray Leonard. Everybody knew it. Knew the sugar man. Even Roberto Duran didn't speak a word of English, but people beyond boxing, they all knew who Roberto Duran was. And that's why these guys were the faces of boxing. The legendary hitman Thomas Hearns. You know, these, these things they transcend boxing, and that's why the face of boxing has to be you have to be something special. Like even for a lot of people, they're gonna say and, and, and sacrilege says it may sound. Jake Paul is the face of boxing. To them, it is. To them, Ryan Garcia is the face of boxing. Because the boxers today, they haven't transcended boxing and become, become breakout stars at, at life, you know? That's what Ali did. That's why he made the Wheaties. That's why you don't see you don't see fighters with their names on their faces on the box of cereal anymore. But see, this is one thing that I do not like about about cards. They take a lot of time between fights. You know, um, I guess they had Torres set for an eight round fight. Well, you knew you knew Richard Torres got eight knockouts and eight victories. He's not going to go the distance. Be ready. Is it ESPN Plus? That's um, that's like a TV thing where they have to be on at a certain time and off on a certain time, right? Let's dig in the fight started now. Leodolfo Delgado, junior, junior welterweight, that great 140-pound division that everybody's, everybody's clamoring in today, man. Leodolfo. Let's check out. Let's check out where he's at. Because, I mean, all, 140. Is is glamour right now? He's nineteen and zero, highly ranked Mexican fighter. Undefeated, fourteen knockouts and nineteen wins. Well, he's got some power. He's been, uh, let's see, he had a knockout in a year ago in April April 9th, and then he knocked out his last opponent, Jose Luis, Jose, uh, excuse me, Luis Hernandez Ramos. Carlos Sanchez is 25 and 2. He's been stopped. He's been stopped uh, two years ago by Pedro Campa. And he's had um, had a knockout. He's had two two uh, two decision victories and uh, lost a decision since then. So he's definitely brought in here as the underdog for the um, for the undefeated Lindolfo Delgado. And hey, we'll see what we'll see what happens here, man. Like I said, the 140 pound division. You know how many how many million dollar fighters are in that division right now 
Yeah, scrapbooks. He's he's doing okay, man. He was on a live the other night. He's uh, he's he, he's back in the swing of things, man. I, I I don't know what he's doing as far as YouTube's going, but uh, his son is is uh, his son is a wrestler, high school wrestler. He's been in a lot of tournaments lately. If you go look on the show, you can see he's been doing he's been putting his son's uh, matches on there, and um. Now, what did you put up there? Bruce Gas, Boxing, Jazz, and more. I meant Bruce Jazz. Bruce Gas. Bruce Jazz. Bruce Jazz. Say, dang. My mom, her man, that green girl to the left, she's sick and starting to nut. She will never know. <laughs> I didn't notice her. Uh, I didn't notice her rolling out. I can't, I'm sorry I didn't because I usually notice things like that. But now we we all want to see Scrapbook come back again, man. I mean, Scrapbook is is my favorite boxing historian of all time. The dude has just got so much information, and um, and like I said, every once in a while he pops in. He, he popped onto my show a, a couple of weeks ago. I was doing a live, and he came in, and um, you know, God bless guys like Scrapbook, man. Just a awesome guy to listen to. Articulate, knowledgeable, fuck man, I can listen to Scrapbook for hours. I have. And um, is this a dumbass mismatch? I know. I want you to call. It's only got two defeats. Um, Carlos Sanchez, twenty-five victories. So maybe you're maybe you're watching before I am, bro. Maybe you maybe you're a minute ahead of me. That's the problem with these three things that I'm on. But um. As I'm seeing it now, man, Sanchez is they're just giving each other out the center ring. Delgado is moving around with head movement. Shooting that jab. Only 30 seconds into the fight. They're just feeling each other out the center ring. Is Delgado that good? Sounds like a roller coaster in the background, man. Huh? I, I I never gave it a preview. I just saw it as uh, free stuff to be listened to, so I put it on there. So uh, bear with me. I feel like I'm uh, I feel like I'm ready to grab that brass ring, man. They had roller coaster. They had a Ferris. Not Ferris. What are they called, man? Fucking uh, carousels. They had them where I lived, man. Big ones. They had the brass ring. Rocky Point Park, man, Crescent Park, Lincoln Park, unbelievable, man. And they played this music, and mm, almost eerie when you think about it now. You can see on Twilight Zones with a guy chasing his daughter on the, on the fucking um, carousel. But anyway, man, Delgado is uh, on his toes. Sanchez keeping his hands high, standing flat footed, shooting his jab out. Delgado is just basically feeling each other out in the first round, first minute, first two minutes of the round. Yeah, they are just exchanging, exchanging jabs right now. You can tell that Delgado's got the um, uh, stiffer jab. He, he puts his body into it. Sanchez just landed him. Good. Just caught him with his jab. Sanchez coming coming forward, throwing a nice right hand to the body. That's the end of the first round. Not a bad first round, Roland. Mm. <coughs> so 
on Valdez and Navarrete. Let's get back to this fight and show these guys in, the, in between rounds, man. Let's see what their corners are telling them. Valdez was uh, very, very disappointed after that loss to Navarrete. Delgado by KO in round six. And this is a ten rounder. Nothing like cold water, man. I'll tell you, it is. The only thing I've been drinking for the last several years, man, gave up the, uh, I used to buy um, Mio. It was these, just diet, these drops, put them in, um, put them in water and it made like Kool-Aid, sugar-free and everything else. But uh, I said, fuck it. All that does is, is, um, Dye your esophagus and your your organs and your your stomach. Because all anything is the essence of what you drink is water, and everything else is kind of a byproduct. Unless it's, a, unless it's a drink that has nutrients, like a sports drink or something like that. But aside from that, man, it's all just dyes, preservatives, sodiums, sugars, unnecessary. Drink straight water. Your body will appreciate you for it. And uh, drink a lot of it, too. Hey, the boxing kangaroo, my brother, Carl. Salute day. Thank you so much for coming by, man. I appreciate your valuable time. At, what is it? Shit, it's only fucking 11 o'clock in the morning over there. That's about the time I give the old lady a pat in the ass and kiss in the neck. And, hey, baby, how about making me some breakfast? They always got the corn checks on the fucking shelf. She says no, but. Very, very seldom do I get a no. Only when she's not feeling good. But uh, she make me four eggs, some hash browns, an English muffin, and she'll even cut up an apple for me or, or uh, you know, a piece of fruit. So I'm a, I'm a lucky man, my man. I'm a lucky man. But today, today I got up real early, and I today was one of those fucking rice checks. They had a big bowl of cereal for breakfast instead. Great dinner tonight, man. Big piece of salmon. Roast potatoes, asparagus, Caesar salad, a little bit of frozen yogurt for dessert. Unbelievable stuff, man. Boxing Day. What the? Oh, Boxing Day like we're watching right now. I get you. See, a lot of, a lot of um, Europeans on the Canadian Boxing Day, that's like something about the store. You know, after day after fucking Christmas or something like that. Boxing Day. Like, Boxing Day, like we understand it. Like fucking the fights are happening right now. Looking at this, looking at this fight right now. Um, I, I I missed a little bit of that last round, but uh, it looks like uh, looks like Sanchez is trying to throw a big punch on the outside. Delgado is dancing, popping him with that jab. Carlos Sanchez, he must have thrown that big one too. Now they're showing the ladies in there. Oh, oh my stream just froze. Let me get back. I unfroze again. See, I got a, I got a very powerful stream. It's only come, I got it coming on the Bluetooth, not even through the direct, direct line here. And it hasn't, uh, hasn't messed up on me once. And right there, I just had that. I don't know what you call it. That little, like, you see these three little dots go through it. Blah, 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 blah. But I got it back again. Yeah, they're, uh, they're talking to the referee, is speaking to the women, getting ready for their, their um, undisputed minimum world championship fight. Undisputed, that's all four belts? Is that the way, is that what this is all about here? Oh, uh, see, my... Uh, my stream just fucking froze on me. I'm gonna have to refresh it. I think I'm watching this one. On. This is the fax stream. No, that's not coming in so well. I'm gonna find it. Let's 
Science Media. Breakout Sports Live. Yes. Okay. Thank you, man. Wide screen. We are in. In the third round, somebody says, yeah, we're in the third round, two minutes and nine seconds to go. And here we go. We're back on it, my man. Back on it. I guess this is like the, uh, the fire stick rolling. Same thing, only different. Well, we are enjoying a, uh, a Friday night at the fights over here. We got two, two main events coming on. We got Muratella in the next fight. Sinisa Strada, undisputed. That means all the belts are on the line. So that's, you know, if you're a fan of women's boxing, maybe I'll become a fan tonight. Who knows, man? It's, uh, I'm here. I'm I'm locked into it. Providing I don't have a drive-by, I'm sitting in front of this TV and watching it. You know, my dog is probably going to put him out. Yesterday, he banged all day. Half of the day today. Fuck, man. I'm glad it stopped raining this afternoon. I was getting fucking seasoned up, man. I couldn't couldn't go for a walk. And that's what I rely on. And I go to the gym and I get a few weights in my head, but nothing, nothing serious. But, uh, I rely on walking for my exercise. When you get old and athletic, man, it's kind of tough to deal with anything else. But walking is, is uh, painless, so... So walking it is, but when it was raining like it was yesterday all day, man, and I tried to sneak out there and do it too. It just fucking couldn't do it. The dog wouldn't even go with me. He'd go for like six feet, stop, shake himself, and put me up. Are you really serious? And then I said, nah. Both of these cats, once again, they are both stand up in the center ring, exchanging jabs. Lindolfo, what a name, Lindolfo Delgado and Carlos Sanchez. Gonzalo's going to win a nice combination downstairs. Delgado, Sanchez got a nice one on the, on the, uh, on the break. Both of them landed nicely. What happened to my music? Pause, continue watching. They keep, they keep asking me if I want to continue watching. Not watching, just listening. Because I it's uh, uncopywritten background stuff. Okay, man. Delgado's getting the uh, talking to in his corner. That Robert Garcia training him. Snack, I see snack on the uh, on the shoulder. Nothing like snack products. I bought the ZMA. Nah, it wasn't. I did it. I did it back in the nineties. I used to think to take it when I was bodybuilding, get a good night's sleep. I bought a thirty day supply about two months ago. I still have about a quarter of it left. I took it for about three weeks. And just wasn't doing it. Kind of give me a little mini hangover in the morning. Not a long one, but just uh, just not worth it. And, uh, and I wasn't getting uh, I wasn't getting uh, any any noticeable difference in sleep. So I says, fuck it. I'm not gonna spend 25 bucks on that. You know, extra zinc in my body. So um, I don't recommend it for anybody unless they're a hard training athlete and absolutely have a real tough time falling asleep. Otherwise, save your money. But there they are, man. Both of these cats in the center ring, man. We got a junior welterweight fight. Rodolfo Delgado, Carlos Sanchez. Uh, Carlos Sanchez out of Mexico, yep. And uh, Delgado out of Mexican, out of Mexico too. So Delgado is ranked the uh, the number three in the uh, third best. Junior welterweight in Mexico, and Sanchez is ranked the uh, sixth, uh, sixth best junior welterweight. There are 293 junior welterweights in the 
in the country of Mexico. So both of these guys are top five ranked, top six ranked Mexican 140 pounders. And this is a this will be a main event across the border, no doubt about it. Over here, it's not even a co main. Pretty much just ex exchanging in the center of the ring. These Delgados landing the more effective shots. But Sanchez, a good opponent. He's got a nice left hook in there. Delgado comes in, nice combination, both downstairs. Sanchez tried that big right hand. Not a lot of action for me in this fight. Sanchez is in there with his, his trainer, Joe Vargas. Not breathing hard at all. A sign of good cardio. The guy does his road work. Takes a mouthful of water, switches it up, spits it out. Carlos Sanchez looks like a very disciplined fighter. He's only got one person talking in his corner. Kind of stoically. Here we go, man. This is the start of round number five. Sanchez wants to do flood fest. Kyle, stand on the outside with both of these guys. Pure Mexican styles, man. You can tell both of them are new fit. Delgado wants to just looking at, looking for uh, openings, as opposed to Sanchez who just wants to come inside the slug. Good body work, good fires. A lot, of, a lot of hooks, a lot of shots downstairs. Pretty good round, pretty good action pack round. Delgado's got to throw something besides that jab. Oh, there was that right hand over the jab. And then land a beautiful uppercut with the right hand. Delgado's hurt him. Left hook. In there, J. 
jab modes right now? Oh, good shot by Delgado. I mean, by Sanchez. Oh, down goes Sanchez. There was a counter right hand. Sent him face first to the canvas. He's up. He doesn't appear to look hurt. I don't know how he couldn't be. Almost looked like he was hit on the side of the head. That's the end of the round. See that one in slow motion. Change my bond water when this fight's over. I hate to I hate to smoke out of a dirty bomb. We have a uh, we have a pretty good fight on our hands, man. Let's, let's see that knockdown again. It was a right hand behind the head. It's it's what it looked like when it happened. And I gave him the benefit of the doubt to him inside the head. Clearly behind the head. It goes down as a knockdown, though. That's the house fighter, man. This is uh this is how it goes in these uh in these top rank showcase fights. Delgado moving forward. Sanchez still, still throwing punches. I think it was more like a, I think he was only temporarily hurt, hit in the back of the head. Looks like he doesn't show any ill effects from that knockdown. Sanchez doing the, doing the lead punching in this round. Good left hook downstairs. Oh, Delgado with a nice hook. Exchange hard punches in the center ring. Sanchez just seems a little slower. Shots on the inside by Delgado. So if he lands the last punches on these exchanges, it seems to be a oh, good combination by Sanchez. Sanchez with a last one. Six, I believe. Four more rounds in this fight. Oh, 
A good rumbling on the inside, throwing some of the punches in slow motion. Liam Wilson in the dressing room, making his mental preparations for the fight. Sneak is in front of him. He's doing his thing over there, man. Who am I to say? Back in the back in the center ring with Rondolfo Delgado and Carlos Sanchez in a 140-pound junior welterweight fight. We'll see, uh, still got three more fights to go on the card. Oh, good, good punch by good punch by Delgado. Delgado just knocked him down. Beautiful, beautiful right hand. Sanchez was walking in. I mean, beautiful. Couldn't hit him any harder. He walked into that punch. That's it. The ref has seen enough. I mean, I got to see that punch again. I mean, it was a right hand. It looked like the, uh, it almost looked like that anchor punch with Ali knocked out. Supposedly knocked up Sonny Liston with in Lewiston, Maine back in, in 1966 or 65, whatever it was, man. It was a long time ago, 64. Damn, I don't know. I was too young to, to remember about it back then. But um, this, was a, this was a right hand that I saw in, in fast motion on a 15-inch screen. I want to see it again in slow motion. I believe it was a right hand, counter right hand as he was coming in. Didn't see the punch, the hardest you can get hit. Mango, lights was out. You were, Gil. You had the, you had the sixth round, and it was just the seventh round. Boom. Let's see this. Bang. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Fucking little short right cross. Boom. You know, when you go down like that, you get up, you're not right for a little bit. Lindolfo Delgado. This is a money division, man. This this cat can make some dough. Bob Arum is like cha-ching, cha-ching. And old eyeballs of Bob's, he figures, hey, man, I can get some gold-plated handles on my coffin. And he's, uh, He's looking at the uh, that talent laden rich 140 pound division man. I mean, take your pick, throw a dot, boy, throw a throw a dot at any of the names on the list. Ten of them, big money fights right there. And um, this is the way you get them, my friends. Active activity and success. You know what I liked last night? I loved, man. I loved when I cost a zoo. They were talking to him and uh, I, they were talking to him about um, the state of boxing and why he accepted this fight. And Brian, he said, you know, on such short notice. And he said, I did it to collect belts and make legacy. And that's why you don't hear too many fighters say today. Muratella and what's this other dude's name? Ex Exlani Denani. Definitely a South African. I'm going to go out on a limb and say. But there's Delgado winning the knockout in round seven. Gil, you almost had it. Man. That's on the um. That's on Champ Ross's poll. 
Raymond Murtella, he's another one at that weight division. He's he's um 140 pounds, man. This is uh this is a dude who's weighed in at 137.1 today, and he has a uh, very impressive record. Let's let's check out Raymond Murtella. 19 and 0, 16 knockouts. Highly ranked man, ranked number nine in the world. Number five in the United States. He owns the um he owns the NABF lightweight belt and the WBA BO global lightweight. So I guess he put those, he retired those belts and he's moving up to 140 with money is in this division where we can get a fight. There are so many names out there looking for quality fighters. This is the only way you make money. You better have, you can't have an A fighter fighting a, a, a fucking guy that uh, an anonymous name out there and expect him for us to buy it. And we want to see Top fighters in the division. We want to see a guy that came off a victory like we just saw. Delgado. I even forgot his name. We want to see him come, come back from us. We want to see a fighter fresh from us. A beautiful, beautiful knockout like that. Take on somebody like Sibyl Diaz. Hey, my brother BBO. Salute, man. How we doing? You know, the 140-pound division is on fire. And this this card for, uh, for uh, you know people that weren't paying much attention to it. The only reason that we were is because it's on a Friday night. But man, any any of these cats that, uh, that we saw tonight fighting, they could they could move up and, and fight any of these any of these guys at 140. There's so many of them right down the list, man. Tiafimo, Subio, Devin Haney. Even uh, Regis is back again. Progress, I bet he's fighting some of the but very, very talent rich division. A lot of money there. And um, so we're going to see, uh, we're going to see Raymond Muratella ready to, ready to make his way into that division. Appreciate appreciate you stopping by BBO Friday night, man. Everybody and their brothers live on YouTube on a Friday night. But I was gonna be watching these fights and you know I just kind of want to get my, my skills up and get my watch hours up. So uh, I said shit man, I'm gonna to do tomorrow night's fights. So tomorrow's a huge card. PBC, Bob, uh fucking uh, the show must go on. You know, um, PBC, uh, Keith Thurman pulled out of the fight, but the show must go on. Now we've got Fandora moving up into the main event with Tim Zhu. And, and uh, the dude Fandora was going to be fighting. It's taking on Brian Mendoza. I can't remember his name, but he's a knockout artist from Ukraine. It's in there. I'll remember, I'll remember tomorrow when I have to. But um, I mean, the whole card is good. Everybody wants to see football. And uh, my boy, the crazy man, Roly. Roly eating his crayons. Roly was pulling at the uh, press conference today. It was the weigh-in of the press. I think it was the weigh-in today. I believe everybody made weight. And the... Um, the Sinisa Estrada fight is coming up shortly. And that's when I'll put my dog out. We're going to still watch it. You know, it's, still, it's still highly highly ranked amongst women's boxing. She's a doll. I love women regardless of whether they're 
fighters or not. So, I mean, she's definitely a hottie. Your Casa Valley. She, she's all right, too. <laughs> My my uh, my tumbler made for me by my brother Blood Boxing and Christiana Fights. I only had this thing for about a year. Got uh, got my brother Curtis Anderson's portrait on it. Miles Davis, Marvin Hagler, down at the bottom. And it doesn't break. I can I can drop it, throw it against the wall. Hey, we do what we do what must be done. And the thing about tonight is Friday night with boxing. Usually I'd be going around on YouTube because that's really the only place I go, man. It's YouTube. Unc, I appreciate that, Dre Fine. It's my brother. I've been hanging out with Unc for years now, man. I'm fucking probably about five years. It's way back in the day. But uh, YouTube is kind of the only place I go to now. It's uh, it's got it's got the. I want to watch the news. I'll go look for the look for the uh, scope. What is what they're saying on YouTube? You know, I want to see this. I want to be entertained. It's it, it's amazing the difference in our, in our entertainment. Where did I get something like like that? Something like what, my bro? But I get I get all kind of crazy things being up here, man. I've had. I love uh, I love the uh, the, the, the uh, appreciative things that I get up here, man. And my brother, my brother Dree Fines, like I said, man, I, I remember him from shit, man, from, from old chats, man, that don't even exist anymore. Well, I don't go to anymore. I guess they're out there. But uh, this is where I go. I get up in the morning and I go see. Uh, I go see my boy Hardcore J usually. That's what I'm, actually, I'm putting my stuff on to, to go for my first walk of the day. And, uh, you know, get a get a boxing fix on there. See, I, I don't put the boxing shows on the, when, when I go off my walk. I put the buds on, I put music, I listen to some, some jazz or some, some pop, whatever I feel like listening to. Some blues. And um, I, 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 I dig the music. I get out there in the fresh air. Sounds, whatever it may be. I mean, I listen to listen to something different. All the time. I like the uh, I like the way uh, Spotify mixes up my, my selection. I pick out the playlist, and just hit play, and man, old stuff, new stuff, classic shit. But then I get back in here, and I very seldom listen to music when I'm in the house. My old lady, she listens to the same stuff. She's into that, you know, the top forty from from twenty five years ago, you know. <laughs> But um, hey, God bless her. You know, one thing about music is you would never, never, never judge somebody's taste in music. Everybody has different tastes, and because I like it, and I tell myself, "Oh, check out this. You're gonna really dig it." I said, "I said you like that?" Nah, I didn't like the words that we use. Jesus. Okay. Well, okay. a long time ago. Do not argue about music, especially with your wife. But she's got a good taste in music. She she digs in the jazz that I listen to. She doesn't know know a lot about it. But she she puts up with it. And she I see her I see her bopping to it sometimes. I take her to concerts with me, clubs and stuff like that. But um, in fact, she bought me a turntable. You know, because I got like I said, I, have, I think I've told this before. I have over three thousand vinyl albums, albums on jazz on vinyl. Okay, albums. What what? But I used to I used to buy. Two or three a week back in the day, back when that was the only way you could listen to the music I, I like. Now it's all over YouTube, man. Everything I have, all these 3,000 albums, maybe, maybe one or two. That's a maybe on there. 
everything else, man. Like I just another one. Impulse live in Tokyo. Twenty-seven bucks. Two album collection, or two album set, and it's on YouTube. Now. I don't have to bring it up anyway. My wife, she knew how much I used to dig it, and she um bought me a turntable. And I said, baby, you know, I said, I don't want to take these albums off me. Baby, first of all, the turntable wasn't that good. And second, secondly, it's such a hassle to pull out an album, pull out the jacket, make sure it doesn't have anything on there, make sure the stylus is clean for it on there. And it sounds better when you just bring it up on YouTube. So, so anyway, 3,000 jazz albums here. I give them away in a second. Somebody appreciate them. I, I mentioned it with Dream Finest, but then I, I went to UPS and I found out the shipping them was going to be freaking thousand dollars. It was you had to get a pallet, you had to uh, shrink wrap them. Ridiculous. But I I, uh, I look at them in front of me, and they are, they are, there's a lot of them, and they're heavy. But they're, uh, they're uh, the, the, the collectors. See, I, I never took really good care of the covers. And the covers make all the difference in the world. I had a guy come down here one time. This was, this was almost 20 years ago. And I was going to sell them. And he told me that the covers, he, he offered me like three bucks a piece. And at the time, I didn't take it. Now I should have taken it. I wanted five. And he said, well, that's what I sell them for. Uh, and now uh, I'm going to hold it. And I shouldn't have. Anyway, they're here, and uh, I would like to find somebody who would appreciate them, and they would definitely be able to take them off my hands. I'll feel good about it. You'll feel good about it. The, the jazz goes on. It's on and on. Some people dig vinyl. Some people like it. I know there's some, some record stores, collectors. But the cover, I never took care of the covers. That's the key. Took, taking care of those covers, they'd be worth what I paid for them more each. Now they have maybe two bucks a piece. And I don't want strangers in my house going through my albums. They, they want to pick and choose and shit like that. So I just want to get rid of them, say goodbye. All they do is gather dust. I haven't, haven't uh, used them. The only time I use them is well, once in a while I'll do a jazz show. I'll, I'll, I'll pull out like a I must have 30 albums by Miles Davis. I'll pull them out and start talking about this this stage of Miles' career, this stage, this stage. And, you know, um, I kind of use them as props anyway. Because the music, like I said, man, YouTube right there. Anything I want to hear, it's there. But yeah, man, we are getting ready now for the uh, Vertella fight to start. They're still talking to the they're talking to the girls over here, Sunisa and Valley. They're doing a little. It's there. I, I don't know if it's live or if it's um or or if it's uh. Well, I'm looking over here in the corner, and what we saw here was wasn't the main the main show is coming up in four minutes at 9:45 my time. No, actually at 9.50. That's a strange time to start, but that's the main card. Everything we, we put on there now was the, was the undercard. And I wasn't even going to go on till 8.30. But like I said earlier, man, I want to get the watch hours and live boxing was on. I'm going to watch it anyway. I'd rather watch it with you guys over here talking about it than I would by... Uh, I don't know who else is doing it, but you know where I go listening to it, I don't think. So here we are, bros, bros and sisters. Appreciate it like you wouldn't believe. Almost, yeah, this thing's just getting a little, a little on the funky side. About time to throw some fresh water in there. right back. Please bear with me for one second. Do I need more drinking stuff? Yeah, I need, a, I need more water too for to drink. We're gonna, we'll do that too. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, back again. That was that was a triple water run. Got some clean water in the toka too. Got a a bottle of water to throw in my tumbler, and I hit the bathroom and dropped off a, about a liter of water. So we're 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 good till the end of the end of the show here. the cold stuff from the from the bottle into the tumbler. So right to the top. You don't want spillage. Gonna catch that screw in the hole properly. Here we go. That took a second, but it's a done deal. Okay. Put that over there. And we're still waiting for this, waiting for Raymond Maralta. Muratala. Muratala. Against um, Zom Sani, the I can't I, I, I butcher his name. I'm not even gonna attempt it right now, man. I'm not even gonna attempt it. Charles D, I didn't even see you in here, man. Shout out to my brother Charles D, man. Salute, man. Peace. Good to see you, bro. Hope you're enjoying these fights tonight, man. Friday night boxing. That's what we're all doing over here on YouTube, man. And uh 
anybody who stops in here says hi to me, I, that's a plus. I appreciate it. Everybody's doing this tonight. You can be anywhere, and anybody that just stopped in, I appreciate that, man. I'm gonna pull out. This is this is Gary Poppins out of my to have a have my little little humidor where I keep various jars of different herb on different occasions. Plus, I have my little uh, my little dabs by. My diamonds and sauce. I keep that in there too. I got a humidor. Hey, my brother Just Do. Salute to you, man. Shout out, man. Just Do Boxing. Great channel out there. And what I do is I get this. This, this it's a form of cigar case. It's got a little airtight thing on there. Like a little burp, kind of like a Tupperware. Press that in. It was solid blue, but I dropped it one day. I cracked it, but it's still airtight. So you can't you can't pull that off without releasing the air. But anyway. I keep my weed in there, and I got this. I'm gonna pull out a butt of this stuff here today called Gary Gary Poppins. Nice little indica dominant for the rest of this fight, man. And we're we're getting ready on the uh, on the Oscar Valdez Leah Wilson card, man. This is the uh, I guess this is the start of the of the main event. The other stuff with preliminaries. To me, it's all it's all it's no no main card, no no. Uh, undercard, whatever. I, it is what it is. It's all boxing. I got see just enough in here for for tonight's festivities. They don't really have a lot in these bottles. Some maybe some have a uh, maybe three three four grams. Some have only a gram. This was down to the maybe about a gram in there. And so this is a uh, retired. Med I put them in these medicine bottles. They're great. There, you, the biggest enemies of your herb is is air moisture and light and this fucking seals all three of those out used to be it used to contain lorazepam one milligram something my wife takes for her anxiety but anyway that's neither here nor there they're great to, they're great to put your herb in and then they go then they go in the humidor and this was probably three months old Still spongy, moist. Get back here. Yes, I do want, want to continue. See, that's the thing about this um, YouTube audio library. After every about 15 or 20 minutes or so, you're going to go back there and tell them to continue. But they're still giving me good music in the background for the Zippo price without any copyright. And even though some, that right there sounds a little bit like a gypsies on the wagon you know not really what i'd be listening to but it's background and it's better than better than quietness and raymond muratella is going to be coming up in the first fight against zola sani donini donini Don, Don, I, don't, I don't know man i don't know anybody know I should I should drop a link so can pronounce that last name for me. I could just put the uh, earbuds in and listen to it. But um, that's what I'll do so I can uh, so I don't butcher his name because man that's that's not justice to do for this fighter. He's already going in against a fucking uh, against an undefeated house fighter. He's got the odds stacked against him. But uh, the last thing he needs to do is for me to mispronounce his name. Hmm. Gary Poppins, very distinctive. It's a cross between the Mary Poppins and the Gary Payton strains. They have all kind of. There's so many strains out there. It's um, it's incredible. I get I get mixed up every time I, I go to a dispensary. There's just fucking every day I go in there. There's a they got they got a half dozen new ones, and me, uh, I love to try these things. That's like my weakness in life. You know, in my old age, not alcohol, not women, not gambling. It's these exotic strains of reefer, and I love them. I love every one of them. And they go great with boxing. 
So Swanee, I, I, I gotta listen to how, how this how this brother pronounces his name because like I said, I'm I'm doing him a injustice every time he does throw this throw this in my in my current my cranium here. Oh, I was way off. I, I only caught the last three syllables, and I didn't even have two syllables in there. Twenty-seven-year-old Raymond Muratella. You know, Zolani has uh, has two names that are really hard to pronounce. Yeah, just dude's got just dude's got to help. I mean, I give him, I give him so much credit for having that discipline to go on there every day, and and, and just do a show like that, man. You know, I don't know if I could do that to, to talk about, to talk about, uh, you know, a, a different topic every day, not being repetitive, you know, keeping it real. And, and you got a lot of people that come in and listen to it, and man, I remember when you first started, and fuck, bro, well, you're doing really good out there, man. And, uh, um, I go in there almost every day. So definitely, man, check out Just Do Boxing, bro. The name says it all. You need your Just Do or you Just Do. Either way, it's Just Do Boxing. And here we go. Here comes the start. New Dungeny. Okay, New Dungeny. And, um, Okay, we we got his name. We don't have to listen to the commentary anymore because uh, I will not be one-sided. I I try I try my brother, you know. I I, I do my thing, and uh, hey, this is this is just so much fun in my in my retirement, and uh, I'm digging it, bro. I dig, I'm digging it. I'm digging the box, and I'm digging the people like like yourself that I meet, and uh, not in my wildest dreams. Muratella is, uh, is he, he looks to be the bigger fighter in there. And then Jenny is a uh, stand up Eastern Cape, yeah, South Africa. Those names very, very difficult to pronounce. A lot of Dutch, a lot of Dutch in those names, and a lot of African. So it's um. It's it's tough tough language to master. They are exchanging jabs in the center ring. Now Tyler is kind of like using that jab. Looks like he's using it as a. Uh, Looks like a, a feeling a range finder. Not snapping it out there, just kind of placing it out there. Oh, good left hook by Maralta. Maratella. Maralta Maratella, man, I, I'll tell you. We like these short names, easy ones to pronounce. Rotella is using that jab as a, like I said, he's using it as a range finder, throwing that right hand behind it. Jamie trying to throw some wide punches on the outside, not letting anything as effective as of yet. He was beaten by Devin Haney five years ago. 
he was undefeated before he stepped in against Devin Haney. Since then, he lost to uh, Prince Diamo, knocked out in the, in the sixth round. He lost to Ernest Mercado, and then he lost to Alan Barbosa. He lost to the city of Alan Barbosa two months ago. He's a very active fighter, and uh, and now he's taking on one of the best in the division. So we'll see what uh, we'll see how this fight turns out. Bertella, top ten, well, top ten junior welterweight in the world. Start of round number two. Oh, this song is gay. I'm sorry, I'm playing it, man. But like I said, background stuff. Teller looks like he's trying to cut the ring off, doing some feigning, trying to get Ghani against the back to the ropes. It's not where he wants to be. Ghani was coming up with some nice combinations up top. Oh, beautiful right hand! Beautiful right hand by Maritella. If these guys are throwing some serious bombs in the second round. I don't know if this fight's going to go the distance, man. They are. They are both putting everything they have into these punches in round number two. Oh, good, good shot by uh, by Nugani. Nugani. Tell like I said, man, he's using that jab as a more of a range finder. I throw that right hand. Oh, good. He dropped that right hand. Timed him nicely. And Nagani's been in there with the more quality opposition. You know, he knows how to handle. Muratella in, in these situations. Muratella, I said, undefeated, looking for some big name fights. He's got to get by this gatekeeper. Oh, I just nailed him with a nice combination. Muratella moving straight forward, throwing straight punches. But um, Nagani's throwing the wide punches, the wide arcing punches. Robert Garcia, a lot of his fighters in there tonight. I wonder if he's got a gym in, um, in Arizona. Oh, that right hand that I saw earlier, they showed it in slow motion. Look, look even more devastating. The second time around. <laughs> I 
And here we go, man. I believe this is round number three. The guy, he looks like he's reaching with his punches. Most of these guys throwing some nice, uh, I gotta go find some. I gotta go find, uh, as soon as this round's over, I'm gonna find uh, a little, little, little more lively background music. This is, uh, I know it's, oh, oh, Lugani just planted a nice combination. Left hook and right hand. Stun, stun more taller a bit. Give him a little more confidence. You're taller with the right hand. Mm. Falling short with that combination. You're very, very nice jaw. He's taking some solid punches. Throwing some solid punches. Both exchanging in the center ring. They haven't needed the referee much in this fight. So far. Both of these guys have been uh, not, not, not a lot of clinching in this fight. Not a lot of clinching at all. Both fighting on the inside, staying on the outside, throwing punches. Even even when they do clinch, they break they break themselves up, they fight out of it. Martel, a beautiful combo. The Jenny takes it, fires back off the ropes. Tyler's landing nice one in that center ring. He's keeping Gotti on his back foot. Keeping him honest with that right hand when he does come forward. Looks like he's trying, maybe trying to uh, initiate a little offense here. Nice footwork, but no way. <clears throat> Vertala looks like he might be uh, exerting himself a little bit more as we're moving up, as this fight's moving along. Like the mechanic, Basil. He's always a, he's a corner man for hire, cut man for hire, really good cut man. He's been in a lot of big fights lately. You see him in Saudi Arabia. You see him in Las Vegas. Now we see him over here in, in Arizona. Mm. They are showing the Dagani landing some nice punches in this in this round. I didn't do what I was going to do with the music. I still have time. Okay, back to the fight. When this fight's over. We'll straighten this music out. Exciting fight we got going on here, man. Raymond Muratella, X Dagani. Yeah, the, uh, the fight's picked up. Both of these guys look like they're ready to roll over here. Both throwing the big bombs. Oh, this look at he's using that range finding jab. Then he come back with a right hand, left hook. Right hand combination. Big right hand by 
Nagani trying to trying to throw that huge, huge overhand right to the inside. Those punches land. It's a dramatic ending, but uh, it's a uh, it's a hard it's a hard punch to land. If somebody knows what they're doing. Okay, showing on it. the girls loosening up, stretching over there, stretching out the calf muscles. Guess that's the next fight coming up. Oh, Martella, good body shot. Starting to break them down. Those are the kind. Those are the kind that pay dividends. Just landed that big right hand, shooting that jab out there. Let him against the corner. Jenny does not want to be, does not want to be, does not want his back against the moves. He, as soon as he feels those moves, he bounces right off. Doesn't stay in the corner, spins right out. He wants to get the center ring. Martella does not want to let him get there. He wants to keep this fight in close. Nice exchange, nice even exchanging in the center ring. Martelli looks like he's just getting ready. Looks like he's trying to, trying to figure out a uh, trap, setting a trap, trying to figure one out. Catch uh, and catch the South African when he comes in. Backs him into the corner. And that's once again the end of the round. Of a pretty decent fight going on here. Martell is ranked number two by WBC, five by the WBO, and seven by the W by the IBF. If that's not a top 10, 130 pounder, I don't know what it is. Now he's ranked as a lightweight. I guess he's moving up to junior, to junior welterweight after this fight. Or this fight is at junior welterweight. So they both weigh 137. So uh, if you know, if you don't make that 135, you're not a lightweight. Hey, Scott Gonzalez, how are you doing, my brother? Good to see you in here, man. I was listening to you talk to uh, Sammy the other day, straightening out about nutrition, man. You, you definitely eat the, uh, you eat hardcore, bro. I used to eat like that when I was into my, my bodybuilding days. Uh, I'm a little lax now, but uh, but all, all the things you were saying, you know, the, that's 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 like the stuff that I used to live by, bro. But anyway, man, here we go, man. We're in the um, we're in the fifth round. I punched that. Muratella's pretty much doubled the, the punches landed. But the fight is still young, man. Anything can happen. I think Muratella's got an amazing chin. Looks like he's putting them on his heels when he does land in a big right hand. Nagani is, is, is backing up when he gets hit. But he is coming forward throwing big shots. I think he might get caught in the middle of one of those big wide right hands. And that might be the uh oh beautiful shots though, man. He just he's he's throwing those wide punches and when he throws uh when he throws those five, six punch combination, a couple of those bombs are gonna get in. Nice right hand just got in for him. Maritella just keeps moving forward. Pouring with that left and shooting that right, then coming back with a left hook. It's been very effective. Oh, good, good right hand by by Muratala. Nagani's got a good chin too, bro. Nagani is a—he's shaking his head. You he didn't hurt me. 
That usually means you kind of did. But he's keeping his hands moving. Neither one of these guys is showing any signs of, uh, of really getting hurt in this fight. Tell a good, good right hand over that jab. Big right hand to the body. Hooks him on the inside. The guy is trying to drop that right hand. Doing so, I'll get one in there. But Terrell is taking it really nicely. You're a pillow in that chair. The guy he just keeps fought, keeps chasing him, just trying, just trying to land that big right hand, throwing it from all different wide angles. Now he's straightening it out a little bit more. Oh, he just got caught in the middle of one of those combinations. Backs him up a little bit. We're telling just as the bell rings. Hey, just Frank, what's happening, my brother? Hope you catch her digging on some boxing on a Friday night. And man, tomorrow more fights. This is for a cat like me who's retired, man. In fact, it's weekend, so even cats like you, but uh, everybody works different hours, different shifts, you know. No, no liquor, no substances at all as well, bro. I mean, I haven't had for the last three years. I drank nothing but water. I have a I drink protein in the morning. I drink a protein shake with whey protein. I put uh, Greek non-fat yogurt in there and uh, water. And that's the only thing I drink all day besides just water. I don't drink any soda or juice. I don't even drink coffee in the morning. But, uh, water is key. Bro. I, drink, I tell people all the time, no matter what your diet's all about, especially when Nick Smith is telling these cats, uh, protein, protein, man. When you do five grams of net carbs every four hours, you know, it's not his rambling bullshit. But um, the key is water, bro. You have to really hydrate yourself when you're doing a lot of protein. You know, that's all synthesized in the liver and the gallbladder. They have to be replenished. So water is so, so important in your realm. In your realm. For life in general, but especially when you're on a high-protein diet. And here we go, man. We're uh, we got we're back in the action over here, baby. Boxing at its finest on a Friday night. Bob Arum, ninety something years old, still putting these fights out. Oh yeah, here we go, man. Murtel is uh, got him on, got him on his heels right now. Those are a couple of devastating blows in the center ring. Action is picking up. Yeah, once again, man. That's not supposed to be there. Here we go. When this fight's over, I'll go straighten my music out right now. But uh, we got to. Uh, that's it, bro. This is this is a killer, killer weekend. And I think um, Grazia Clark and Yali are fighting too in the afternoon tomorrow. So this is not stop here, man. A lot of good action going on in center ring right now. Muratala is, is is trying to take charge. He's got Narani on his heels. He's trying to get him back against the ropes. That's when he unloads his, his best work. Devastating knockout puncher. Nine, 16 knockouts in his 19 victories. Beautiful shot to the body. Right hand, a little, a little, little kidney-ish, but no. It was Lee. Just missed the right hand. Nagani comes back, hooking him to the body. Once again, catches him on, on the outside. Nagani throwing that combination. 
Now, Tyler's got to shorten that distance. That's when he does his best work, man, when he gets to the inside. But Vitaly does not. Ghani does not want to cooperate. He wants to stay on his feet. Just saying that a nice combination to Vitaly's. Muratali's head. And once again, the end of the round. Good little fight here, man. If Muratali can keep this up, man, he's going to win this fight on decision. We, we just never know. It's uh, it's boxing. Anything can happen. And this is this is like the first fight of the main card. So uh, this is really just getting started. I guess we got after this we've got the uh, Strata fight, and then the main event, Oscar Valdez, man, Liam Wilson, Oscar Valdez, always excitement. What the core? Verena check. Was that the cat that he fought? That guy, you know, had a big controversy. Thanks, my brother. That's all stuff that you can play on YouTube. You know, that's uh, dirty old blues, no copyright music. There's a there's a bunch of shit on here, man. It's uh, you can play on here and makes your show go by a little better. You don't get copywritten for. And here we go, man. The start of the seventh round in this very exciting 140 pound fight. The winner of this fight, and even maybe the loser, they're going to see him be fighting uh, a lot of these, a lot of these top 140 pounds out there. And, uh, the division is loaded with them. It's it's fights like this where they make they, they cultivate the opponents. And this is how you get the B sides. And some of these B sides, they're 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 live. This is what we want to, oh, good shot by McCullough on there, by, um, by the Matt, by Jenny. Maybe tomorrow I'll be able to pronounce that name right. I think Zoo's going to beat him, but man, he's looking ahead, he's looking ahead to, uh, to Bud Crawford and, you know, the, uh, should he make the, the decision now? People are calling him, uh, uh, you know, like a Canelo, uh, Queen Madonna because he's going to pick between Crawford and and fucking Spence. But, dude, he's got to get by Fandora. Fandora is not a chump. You know, he got caught by Mendoza. He was ahead of the fight. He was ahead before he did. And um, maybe he learned a little bit, man. It's, it's going to be a great fight. Uh, this is the kind of fights I love. It's 50-50. Anything can happen. The whole card is killer. Yeah, dude. Once again, give me... What the fuck? See, this is not. I don't know why it keeps going back on there. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do something better. better on this here. Let me see. Put some of this blues on there. That's copyright free stuff. That'll work. Okay. Something a little more up my alley. Back to boxing. Muratella, Nanji. Muratella's got a lead on my on my card. I'm not keeping score, just in my head. At the end of the fight, if he doesn't win by knockout, or doesn't get knocked out, I have my head in this in this fight so far. No zoo definitely better not work for another. But who knows, man? Maybe he's going to come on him and chop him right in half. And he goes, still got that knockout on his mind. And who has Zoo beaten, really, man? You know? Lord Pellis, sticking that jab out there. Oh, Don Jenny with a nice, nice right hand. He's definitely, uh, he throws those, those punches and punches. And, and that's what happens. And he kind of looks at him when that fellow rings and says, I'm still here, motherfucker. I'm getting his ice compression. He's getting the end swell by Mike the Mechanic Rosea. He's definitely one of your better cutmen out there. 
John Jenny is still getting his uh, instructions. He's still uh, he's, he's in this fight. He wants to do more than survive. And we're getting into the, the money rounds here, man. This is where this is where fighters are. This is where they are. Uh, keep it going, bro. This is where you want to you want to show your will. You want to impose your will on your opponents. You know, three more rounds. And Jenny would keeps throwing that right hand. Got some power behind it. Just landed a nice one. And that's his game. Just keep throwing that left, left, right, left, left, right. And he's landing it more often than not. Laura Teller with a big right hand. Through that, through that combination, came up a little short that time. Once again, they're both shooting jabs at each other in the center ring. Don Jelly got the long arms, going in the combination. Doesn't want to let. You know, tell it it's set up and throw a shot. Beautiful uppercut, sneaky right hand uppercut. Both of these guys are standing chance. Both of these guys, not, not a lot of technique, just punching in the punching inside, moving outside. No trying to land that big right hand bomb. Ghani just threw a nice one and landed it. Mineralla's got a great jaw. Very tight. Then Jenny with some nice work on the inside, step back, throws that throwing that big right hand, man. Oof, both of these guys, big bombs. Muratella just got him on his heels. Moving forward with a big right hand. First bench the ref. See the first bench the referee had to break him up. I can remember. Both of these guys looking for looking to end this fight with one punch here. Both of them big bombs. Both of these guys have got to be exhausted keeping up this pace. Oh, well. In the, in the eighth round, that's it, man. Nangani tried to catch him with that full counter in the corner. Loretella was having none of it. Here we go, man. Once again, man. Between rounds. Robin Garcia giving instructions. Okay, here we are. Oh yeah, bro. I, it's getting it's getting like that now, all over again, Scott. Though it's getting this week anyway. But uh, Tuesday night fights, man, we could count on listening to Sean O'Grady and Marv Albert. And, uh, I think it was Marv Albert. And Friday night fights with Bernstein and Teddy. Those were the days, man. But now, now we're getting great stuff. I can't complain anymore. A Friday and Saturday are in a row with, with some decent fights on. Tomorrow could be up. 
He's outstanding. Tanade is today is done decent so far. We still haven't even seen either one of the main events. The co or the main. I'll tell you, man. And Jenny reminds me of the way he fights a Bob Foster. We did not have the destructive power that Bob Foster had. Otherwise, his fight would be over. But he just has that, almost that um, neutral fold with that left, almost like a shuffle, and then drop that big right hand bomb. Almost like takes takes a little two step to try to throw it, get a little leverage on it. You might get timed in the middle of that two step. Not a knockdown. I knocked out. Referee wipes your gloves off. They are both unloading, man. Both unloading. The fight is uh both on their minds as a very close fight. We got Muratella up on my cards. On my card in my head. I just I'm winning the fight. I think he's being a bit more effective, throwing more punches. And hasn't been hurt as much as. Don Jenny is still in this fight, still still firing away. Man. I said he's just trying to throw that big right hand. He looks like he's got a long reach. These guys are throwing some great punches, man. 30 seconds to go in this fight. Big right hand by Jenny. Laura Tyler throwing those shots on the inside. Elbow and the shoulder by, by Laura Tyler. Then Jenny is stepping back, man. Shooting that hook. Covering up. Laura Tyler's got him against the ropes. He comes back. Then Jenny comes back with that right hand, and that's the end of the round, man. These guys are giving all they got in this fight. They're not leaving anything, anything on the sides. They're, they're laying it on the line. We've got two more rounds to go. And they're showing the 135-pound division. These guys are both formally in the 135-pound division. They're now in the... Junior lightweight division, junior welterweight division, but they're showing the, the, the top fighters at 135 too. I mean, this is this is money. These weights are these weight classes are full of full of fights we want to see. And and these fighters, they should not uh, they shouldn't let this pass, man. This is it's a time for these little guys to make some dough. You no, know, this is not the day of Floyd Mayweather anymore. They gotta make this money while they can. Yeah. A little more water over here. And here we go for the beginning of round number nine. Oh no, round number ten. Oh, round number nine went by me. This is it, man. If this is round number ten, we're not going to see any hesitation here. Nothing, nothing left to go. Nothing to do but throw punches, and that's what they're doing, man. And send around. Amazing, amazing. Now. Number of shots being thrown by both of these guys, especially in Jenny. In Jenny, really, you know, going to go through the whole fight. Now, Lenny's man. Oh, he just got caught in his track. Man. Big right hand, another right hand. Sends him on his heels. Murtella might have him in trouble. He's starting to open up. Great recuperative powers by him and Jenny. Both of them big bombs in this round. This should be a very interesting uh, two minutes to go, man. Interesting two minutes, but even when it goes to decision. 
Oh, good, good, uh, good counter press by Good Jenny. I I understand though. I understand what you're saying, bro. They're both exchanging, exchanging punches in the last the last minute of this fight. Good body shot by the Jenny. Really tell us, trying to get him in the corner. Combination by Murray Still trying to land that big right hand. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, threw that one out. Sound feel. Muratal is still in those crisp combos on the inside. Just trying to stay away from that right hand. And the fight is over. And it's going to be interesting to see how the judges saw it. I think the decision's pretty obvious, but uh, then Jenny's not going to not going to think so. We'll catch the decision when it comes up. I'll put my, my buds in just so I can so I can hear what the, how the judges saw it. And we'll get ready for the uh, for the ladies out here. It's uh it's an undisputed. So it is. Uh, I, I'm not, like I said, I'm not familiar with women's boxing. Who are the who are the women's champions out there? Undisputed is it? Um, Clarissa Shields is she uh is she an undisputed women's champion out there? I know there's a couple of them, I believe. Um. I can't even think of her name. There's another, another bar. My mind's just going blank right now. But she's always, she's, she's on the Jake Paul cards from uh, Miami. Her brother Maldonado trains her. The fuck is her name? No, not Katie Taylor. No, oh, they're, they're, they're undisputed, but I'm trying. I was trying to think of the uh, the one that's on my my mind right now, the Puerto Rican. Fuck, man! I've only said the name a million times, but right now I can't think of it. But they're um, they're getting ready for the decision to be announced, I believe. Here we go. Here's the decision. One judge, ninety nine, ninety one. Yes, pretty, pretty wide decision. When it comes to rounds, Muratellis won those rounds. So he gets, he wins a unanimous decision. Stays undefeated. Not a bad fight. Go on and catch the uh, we'll catch the Shanice Estrada card. Amanda Serrano. So I don't I don't know why I couldn't think of that, Scott. It just was off the it, my, my mind went blank and I couldn't think of it. And I've seen her so I've seen her in interviews before so many times. I've seen tons of the fights, but um <laughs> That's what happens when you get old and smoke a lot of weed. So look out. Sanicia Estrada. Number one ranked straw weight by the uh, by ESPN. 
Yokasa Valley, 30 and 2, 9 knockouts. Sanis is undefeated with 9 knockouts. They both fought five different champions. Timothy Bradley and Bernardo Sana at ringside. I thought Timothy was with Pro Box. I guess he's not. I guess he's not. He's with Top Rank. For some reason, I thought he was with Pro Box. Roland, you're a big fan of Sinisa Strada, aren't you? Yeah, I know. I, I, uh, I hear you, Scott. But for some reason, I for some reason I thought he was. Uh, I thought he uh, he he was talking about him. He talked to my man George Jakovic last night on George's show. And George was just with Top Rank. He just got canned by them. And I, for some reason, I thought Timothy Bradley used to be there. To be, uh, they used to have the, uh, the celebrities in the audience. But, you know, everything seems to run into all these different promotions and, uh, and the different different uh, promotions. They, they kind of like run into one another in, in my head. Because I, when I was watching boxing in my day, I never, never paid attention to it. The promoters. Now, there was always Don King and Aramar. Sometimes they even co promoted fights. And, and uh, fights had to be made. They were made. You know, there was, there, there wasn't a lot of squabbles. Bean counters didn't, didn't, uh, didn't rule boxing like they do today. Uh, when fights had to be made, contact facts were signed, and, uh, and the fights happened. You know, today we're in a different world. Everything's got to go through attorneys and promotions. You, know, you can't cross promotions. You have to have your managerial company on board with the promoter. I mean, it's a, it's a fucking mess out there. They definitely were the best days, Scott. No doubt about it. As far as the quality of the fights that they gave us, man, regularly. You know, but hey, today it's not so bad anymore. You know, recently, especially with the Saudis, with Turkey Al Sheikh coming in there and they throwing out the dough, bringing his, his heavyweights, man. Shit. I love what he's doing. I want to go out there. If I, if I do go on a vacation, if I could have a choice to go pretty much anywhere in the world, but right now, I would go to Saudi to see some fight. Make sure I got a good round trip ticket and I come back the next day. But I would definitely go out there to see some of the action. Enjoy some of the ambience and, and check it out. I heard they're going to start allowing alcohol to be drank over there. I don't know how Mike Tyson could go over there and hang out for any length of time without any weed. I'm sure he must have had his um, his vape pipe with him. He must have had his freaking. Yes, your royal highness. Yes, your royal highness. Yes, your royal highness. You know, it's 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 known for its uh, human rights violations, and I wish we didn't have to fight them. I wish it could happen in the United States like it always did. But we're in a different world, a different a different economy. It's a different global. The United States does not rule the world anymore as far as boxing goes, as far as anything goes, really. But uh, you know the. Uh, it's an international sport. The Saudis want to put the money out. The fighters want to go there and get these big purses. Because you know, fighters fight so infrequently now. If they get these big purses, they don't have to get their brains beat in. Because I mean, it's dangerous. Just going in there and sparring on a daily basis, that's fucking dangerous, man. 
You ever see, you ever put boxing gloves on and see how hard those suckers are, man? I mean, it, it ain't no playing games. Your brain gets fucking jilted. Your brain, especially against these hard fighters. And you go into, damn, some of these gyms, they don't even wear headgear when they spar. You know, back in the old days, back in the Kronk days, they didn't wear headgear. Yeah. Fucking uh, Kevin Rooney's custom, custom idols gym up in Scapskills. No headgear. You know, now it's now we know because we know we have the uh, what happened to these fighters from taking all these punches. And these fighters now they want big money to entertain us, and they don't want to take the risk. They don't want to fight weekly, monthly, whatever. They just want to fight every once in a while and make the big dollars. And that's the way it is. So I got to give a lot of credit to the Saudis for ma making these fights happen. You know, bypassing these negotiations. And uh, hey. Whatever it takes to bring good boxing to us, keep all parties satisfied. And it, it ain't boxing ain't like it used to be. It's not like we're going to see like the Don King heavyweight tournaments anymore. You know, I don't think it is. Maybe it will be again. I'd love to see it. And who knows? Maybe Saudis are the ones to make this happen. I'm just aboard for the ride at this stage of the game, you know? I'm just enjoying the ride. You know, my time for running around and, and bitching about what's going on in Boston, that's, that's past. I'm just, just fucking enjoying, the, enjoying what's presented to me. Think of what I'm doing over here. I'm in Arizona tonight. I'll be in Las Vegas tomorrow night, you know, without leaving my confines of my lovely and culture over here. Got my... Combustibles handy, plenty of water. The dog hasn't bugged me. Maybe I'll get to see the next fight. But anyway, man, Estrada's in the ring, Valley's in the ring. These are small girls, 104 pounds, 104.2, 104.3, 4 undisputed minimum weight. I don't know about you, but minimum that means the uh, that means the, the end of the line, bro. That means the bottom. You know, when the, when the bank account's minimum, that's not good. She's got a Maharachi band doing a little bit of on, a little singing for her. I guess that would be Samisa Strada. Go check her. Check her shit out on, on the box record. Let's see, man. She's 25 and 0 with nine knockouts. As far as the uh, her ratings go, she's ranked number two in the world in, uh, as a minimum weight woman's boxer. She's ranked number one in the United States. And uh, Yokasa Valley is 30 and 2. She's ranked number one in the world and number one in her native country of Costa Rica. So, I mean, we are, these are the best women boxers in the world right now in the minimum weight division, number one and number two, taking on number one and number two. So if you like women's boxing, man, this is going to be a, a very, uh, this is a top quality fight. This is for the uh, IBF title, the WBA title, the WBC title, and the WBO title. Uh, as far as um, as far as a, a top top shelf fight in women's boxing, this is one of them, my friends. So let's uh, let's let's kick back and enjoy it, man. Let me say, um, Valley's got two defeats on her record. She's never been stopped, and Estrada is undefeated. So if you're if you're a fan of women's boxing, this is as good as it gets.
Yeah, there's quite a bit of fanfare in the in the ring for this fight. Flags of many countries. Hot ringside girls. Them top ranked girls are something. I, didn't, I haven't even been noticing them yet today. Rolling with the punches, big Sanisa Strata fan out there, man. Now, do we have uh, a one of these? Um, uh, uh, is there one undisputed, or is it uh, one has two of the belts or three of the belts? And is this going to make undisputed, or is this uh, a defensive undisputed? I don't know. Help me out out there. Okay, we are getting ready, man. The cell phone lights are all on. Everybody's got their flashlight on. Yeah, Valley is the WBO and the IBF. Strata is the WBA and the WBC. One time the WBA and the WBC would make you undisputed, but that was that was yesterday's boxing. We're in a crazy era called the four belter, which is nuts. We have interim champions tomorrow. I think every fight tomorrow is a world title fight. It's fucking crazy how devalued these belts have become in the eyes of true boxing fans. You know, you got everybody's got a world champ or an interim champ. Or a regular champ, or a super champ, or a franchise champ. It's fucking crazy. And that's in one division. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, you know, I should, I was gonna have people come on here with me, but I do I, I blab so much. I I'm I'm bad to be on a panel with because um I go off on different directions and Never can stay on the same topic. You know? What's good about being on YouTube here, you can kind of control your own environment. You can do your own thing on your own channel and not offend anybody. That, uh, that background sound almost sounds like the police watching the detectives. The Elvis Costello. Got that police beat to it. But it's one of those one of those freebies, copyright free, that we won't get busted for. Keep our show up and and so be it. In fact, today I think I'm going to go over the. My watch hour limit, which is which is a uh, a first for me. You might see my little begging cup out there in a few days if it goes through. But um, but here we go, man. We are. The Sinisa Strata is a very very tough looking broad. Man. I walked in a bar and saw her looking like that. I wouldn't fuck with her, man. And, and and there's even more of them out there, Scott. We got like the, the WBF and the um, IBA, IBC. It's crazy. There's so many fucking ones out there. It's ridiculous. Oh no, my screen froze. You get over there and unfreeze it quickly. There we go, unfrozen. I think we got a, I think we got good uh, good weather out there tonight. Good signal. It's, yeah, it's showing. I'm I'm, I'm pretty good. In, Good and clean out there tonight. Cause you never know with these uh, with these YouTube streaming live broadcasts. Sometimes you, I seen a, I seen a few of them today that, that went down in the middle of them. You know, not went down. But they get that thing that comes and spins and around before you before you're ready to do it. And there we go, man. Sinisa Strada is throwing out that long jab. Valley moving inside. Valley throwing a jab too. Both of these fighters, man, they are doing a little more than feeling each other out in the opening seconds of this round, the opening minutes. 
He gets pushed down, no knockdown. Women's boxing. This is it. I'm just not a big fan. I'm sorry, my friends. This isn't making me any more of a big fan. We're only uh, one round into it. I couldn't even tell you the four male minimum weight champions. And that's the end of the round. I don't know, man. Estrada. Big cut over the head of Valley. Must have been a clash of heads in there. It's in a bad spot, man. Blood going into her eye. Really bad spot. I don't see her corner touching it. I don't see her corner putting any pressure on there. Uh, I, that's that's not good. That's a, that looks like a big cut. It's only the first round. Let's see if we can see where that clash of heads happened. There it was right there. Boom, right over her right eye. That's what he saw it was right there. Unintentional clash of heads. They kind of cover it up, man. They're putting the um, 1% adrenaline solution on there, some Vaseline. Get that Q-tip in there. Apply pressure. This is going to be a bloody fight, man. Uh, this does not really uh, improve my, my love for women's boxing. I don't like to see my women bloody. Not from the neck down, uh, not from the waist uh, You know what I'm saying. Desperation's already started in this fight. For both fighters. Is it three rounds or four rounds? After that, it goes to the cards. If it's stopped, it'll be a technical draw. Stroud is a switch hitter. And uh, exchanging punches. The strider is not zeroing in on that eye. You know, maybe she wants to uh, make sure this fight goes over the four rounds. That's it for round number two. Let's take, a, take another look at that eye. Cameron, you got one job to do, and you're not doing it. You're the wrong side. Mm -hmm. 
Between the second and third round in a I don't know, two minute rounds. That's why I keep forgetting these are two minute rounds, aren't they? Are they Does anybody know? There we go. Stride has got a real weird shot. Everybody's trainer up there, they're yelling instructions at the inside. Jab out there. Estrada's trying to keep Valley from charging in. Very weird angles. Somewhat entertaining. Boxing is not my thing. And it's funny because a lot of people, it's not, everybody seems to know it's not my thing. Oh, those guys, I, I know it's not your thing, but the, forgive me. Yeah, Florence, it looks like a cat fight on a Saturday night here, man. That's the end of the round. Do another blast here, if you don't mind. After all, I just got reminded it's Friday night, not Saturday night. Easter Sunday, too, on Sunday, man. When I was a kid, man, we used to get the Easter bunnies. <laughs> A lot of, lot of, lot of funny things back then, man. <laughs> and here we go. It's going to be strange, man. Tomorrow, Saturday, I'll be getting up and get up. Full day of boxing. Wild. What's the referee breaking up for? Too much Vaseline on that eye? Nope. It usually goes flying anyway. Oh, yeah, they're going, they're going toe to toe. You don't see a lot of knockouts of women in boxing, do you? Men of Saran got knocked out by that guy. You saw that one up there. Not a man of Saran, but Mr. Shields. That's my thing. Thank you. 
Find a music album this way. Okay, this is uh, this is usually pretty good. Listen. There we go. A little more appropriate for me. Applying the pressure on that eye. They did a remarkable, remarkable job at keeping that blood, stopping that blood flow. I thought that was going to be a. Well, well look, look, let's see, um, let's see Valley's Corner. Go back to that. Yeah, there we go. I haven't seen a lot of blood during the fight. So they're doing a pretty good job at coagulating that gas up there. And that is a gas. Here we go. It's round number four coming up. Round number five. Yeah, round number five. Five. Joe's both kind of slugging it on the inside. I started trying to show different angles, different kind of style of fighting. Some good shots being thrown by both of these girls. So the Stratus got that really, really perky jerky style. Confusing. Really hard to fight in the valleys. Moving forward, she got that cut on the right eye. She got right about Stally moving those hands and into the round. The rounds are going by kind of fast. That's good. Liam Wilson warming up, man. He's the uh, the number two WBC lightweight contender. This Gary Poppins is doing the job nicely. Here we go for round number six. Oh no, my screen went down. I gotta refresh it. Crash, man. Oh, so I gotta go find another site. That's not too difficult in this day and age. So, especially during uh, 
No, no, let's fight it out. Down on here, let's get the boxing. Boxing. Oscar Valdez, Liam Wilson playing. Let's go down to good quality. Feel the screen. Oh, no, we're off on this site. We'll have to go to another site. Uh, pirate streamer, a tough place to be. Okay, we got one here. Let me go on back screen or something. Let's see, we're in the um, I missed about 25 seconds, but we have 119 seconds to go in the uh, in the sixth round, and we are watching it on. One of these great free streams that are out there. One of these great free streaming shows. I don't know the name of it. I can work fast, but uh, man, that a strive, man. Look at that. It looks like Jerry Lewis and everything. That's just a that's weird. Fucking boxing around. We're going to show you back and forth. That's fucking strange. Look at that shit. Not entertaining, man. It's just not doing it for me. Not yet. Not 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 here fucking pulling that bullshit. Man. I'm just not a fan of women's boxing. What can I tell you? We'll democratically call it over here and uh let you know what's going on. But I want to see Oscar Valdez and Liam step into the ring. Hey Mick Smith, how you doing, man? You're just in time. We got women's boxing, your favorite sport coming over here. I'm waiting for it to pass so we can get to the main event. I don't know if you're watching this right now, Mick Smith, but uh, it's not entertaining me. Well, it's it is, it is entertaining me, but not 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 a lot, not very much. But I'm keeping a good buzz going on. I'm waiting for the next fight to start. It's almost like a intermission, you know. Like I said, when women's boxing came on, back on the Don King card, that was time to make a run to the packy. I'll go make some sandwiches or some shit like that. But uh, my enthusiasm for women's boxing hasn't changed. I'm just not a fan. Especially 105 pound women boxing. Moves like a bee. <laughs> Who do you got ahead in this fight, Roland? Strata or uh, or Valley? Probably Estrada because um <laughs> oh man. There's no leverage on those punches, Roland. They're all fucking arm punches, man. They're slapsies. Go back and watch Slapsy Maxi Rosenblum. The guy had about 200 fights. You couldn't hit him with a fucking shotgun, man. He was so evasive. But he, but he was like that. But he only knocked out about 20 people. You know, he was just a... Uh, he, he is a slapper. Oh, I 
just saw a valley drop a right hand. Has either one of these girls been stomped or they have they have a lot of knockouts? Let's see. Valley's got uh nine knockouts and 30 wins. And um Estrada's got nine knockouts and 25 wins. So I wouldn't I wouldn't count on a knockout in this fight. And they're the best at this weight that women have to offer. So um, if you're a fan of women's boxing, don't get much better than this. She have a gold. No, that's a, that's got to be like a, a, a sports bra or something. I thought she had a gold chain around her neck for a second. I'm saying, what is this? WWE? I'm only watching uh, a little screen anyway, man. You know, a little 15 inch uh, laptop screen. <laughs> The action is definitely picked up on this round, though. We're in the eighth round. Now they're starting to punch like a couple of guys in there. Roland, you got better leg movement than they do, man. I've seen you out there in the bar. Slapping each other around. Another round in the books. Moving on with the, uh, let me go find. It's tough finding anything that sounds good that you can get for nothing. This is okay. I can find something better than this. What is this? Let me see what this looks like over here. I think I already played this one tonight. That's not bad for free back background stuff. Referees have Estrada up by four points. The uh, unofficial inside judges. Two more rounds to go. 
She's uh, she, Estrada's trying to be a show when she's playing the Matador. She's trying to wave the red flag. You know? What, what do you think about that one, Roland? Is that a class move or what? I'm trying to get the bull to charge. Hooray! Okay, yeah. Straighten that volume out a little bit. It sounds just a little bit too loud on my end. I think that's better. We're really closing in on the last round of this fight. Another 30 seconds to go in the ninth. Of a very action packed women's boxing for the undisputed minimum weight. It's 105 pounds, I think. Very, very small women. Oh, the bull just got in there and got a couple of shots in. Nailed Estrada with a right hand. That's what Valley has to do, man. And that's the end of the round. These two two minute rounds too, man. That's another thing. How can you really get get an offense formed when they give you two minutes to do it in? But hey. I like women's boxing because rolling with the punches likes women's boxing, so my new favorite sport. They're showing like the connection percentages and things like that on uh, you know the little highlights in the corner. Connected on 36% of her punches. Oh, excuse me. This is the last round of this exciting fight. <clears throat> Valley should be looking desperate if the uh, unofficial ringside score is correct. And she is moving those hands with urgency. Good stuff going on. These women are kicking the shit out of each other. Oh, big left, big right hand by Valley. Probably the best punch I've seen scored in the Twenty seconds remaining. Valley has landed that right hand, that overhand right. She landed it twice in this round. Probably enough to give her the round. But it's gone to the scorecards. I would give it to Estrada if I was an official scorer, just by guesstimating it in my head, not keeping a score on on paper. So I'm going to say Estrada has um. Valley's running around with her hands up. And once again, we'll have to put the earbuds on and see what the uh, what the judges say. Blood running down the face of Valley. 
and she is raising her hand in victory. So both of these, both of these women, I think they, both of these women, I think they uh, become the undisputed minimum weight from minimum weight to heavyweight. Absolutely want to hear the scoring in this. Oh, a low blow. They were both landing some good shots in this fight. Very close in the uh, copy box. That's what they're still calling it these days, man. Very close, though. Okay, we got the referee in the ring, the uh, ring announcer in there. See what he's got to say. Mark Kriegel has it 97-93 for Sinisa Strada. Okay, man, here's the scorecards in this exciting women's undisputed minimum weight fight. Estrada, unanimous decision, but I have to hear it first. Yeah, Estrada, unanimous. I won't disagree. I will bring this other fight out here. I'm sure there's going to be a, a lengthy intermission. Until it begins, I may have to change my bong water. These are good for about a dozen hits. I think I did about that. Watching this. Yeah, I get a quick change in between fights here to get ready for the main event. Once again, if you're in here, please don't forget to hit that like button. I understand it's very important in the algorithm of things, man. As we move down the road here on YouTube. And Facebook, too. Anybody out there listening to me on Facebook, I see a couple of thumbs up out there. Appreciate it. And I'm on um, X. Normally known as Twitter. I'm, I'm, I'm on that platform, too. So any of you cats on X, I know Michael Johnson's always out there. And uh, G Funky always checking my shit out on X on, uh, yeah, on Twitter. But they're interviewing Estrada. Now she's... Um, She's displaying all her hardware up there, man. My heat just cranked in. Oh, it's 40 out there. That's, that's about average for this time of year, man. You know, it's crazy in New England now. The weather's so, so different to the past. So, Three years, we haven't had enough snow to even shovel. I remember we had to shovel. I'd have people come down and plow my driveway. It was crazy. You, know, fucking, you, you, had, you need a four-wheel drive to get everywhere. The last few years, it's non-existent. I bought an electric snow shovel. It's a cool thing, man. I remember seeing them years ago, and I bought one three years ago. I, I haven't used it once. That shows you how much snow we've had around here in the past uh, past several years. And let's see, man. Let's see. We're getting ready for the uh, 
for the main event to start, man. Oscar Valdez. I remember watching Oscar Valdez several times on the uh, on on the uh, YouTube channels here on the internet. He's been in some pretty big fights over here, man. The two fights that he lost were the huge, the last one, the Navarrete fight. This across Stevens. When he had that that fight with Miguel Rachel, that was a fucking hell of a fight. That's one where they said he had the um the stimulant in there, the, the illegal fat burner to make the weight. And uh, he got he got uh, sanctioned the uh, Indian reservation when let the fight go on. And everybody thought that he had uh, he had trained himself, so he didn't even have anything. He beat the hell out of himself, knocked him out. And then uh, Robinson, Robinson, Consenco, Consencio. You know, coming off the Shakur Stevenson fight, he, uh, he lost to Emmanuel Navarrete. So this is, uh, this is kind of go time for Oscar Valdez. William Wilson, man, he's a, uh, European grade fighter, is he gonna be a test for Valdez? I don't think so, man. I think Oscar's gonna rise to the occasion here. This is the WBO interim will super featherweight title. Interim title. That's the, that's the craziest one out there. You know, I always associated interim with a when a champion was, was down, was uh, you know, when he couldn't defend his title, they'd have they have the interim champion would, would come would come and take his uh, take his defenses. He he called the interim champion, and it was prestigious. And then when the other champ, if he came back, he'd have that option of fighting. If not, he'd become the legitimate champ. But now the interim champ is a whole different thing, man. It's like I don't I don't know what it is. I really don't. Someone was telling me the interim champ is not the number one contender. Or oh, the number one contender is not the mandatory. A lot, a lot of crazy, a lot of crazy rules in these, in all these governing organizations. I see some of these. I see a few masks out there. Not many, and the two that I see, they pulled down to the chin. Valdez loosening up, man. He's good. He's ready to go. He's just popping around or something. Imagine that music. He doesn't have the, uh, the head but the buds in the air. Maybe he's got some music playing in the dressing room. What about those swimming pool things that they use now? Those swimming pool fucking floaties. People use those for fucking big training or something. I see him in Valdez's training room. William Wilson is going through his final prayers right now, man. Well, let's get ready for some boxing. What does Liam Wilson have for a um, for a record here? He's got thirteen victories and seven knockouts. Anybody on his record be besides the loss to Emmanuel Navarrete that we know, man, let's see. Joe Norne. Joe Norne. He fought Joe Norne twice. Joe Norne stopped him and with a TKO. In 2001 and then in 2002, he fought Joe Nonne and he knocked Joe Nonne out in the second round. They never had a trilogy. Strange, you know, you knock somebody out, then they knock you out, and you would um, you would expect a trilogy. But that's what happened when uh, Lennox Lewis fought um, Asim Rockman and kind of uh, Oliver McCall, too. They never got the trilogies out of those fights. They were one and one. But um, it 
this is the biggest fight for Oscar Valdez. And uh, I'm sorry, the biggest fight for Liam Wilson and for Oscar Valdez to keep his career relevant. Very, very important victory. Oh, I like Anui, man. Are you kidding me? Anui is special. And Casemiro? That's, that, that's... Anui is, uh, Anui's a monster right now. I just think he's, uh, I think he would, uh, you, 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 you'd ruin Casemiro if you put him in there with uh, Anui. And for, thank you for coming in on Facebook. I appreciate that. I'll try to get the spread this media out a little bit. And right, here we go, man. It looks like they're not going to keep us waiting any longer. But as far as predictions go, I'm always wrong anyway. I'm terrible with predictions. Oh, they're showing Valdez's eye after the uh oh. I get a feeling we're gonna see some very hard punches thrown in this fight. Highly entertaining. Possibly a stoppage by Valdez. This is what I'm I'm expecting. You never know in boxing anything's liable to happen and probably will. So we'll just uh, enjoy the enjoy the fight here and um Desert Diamond Arena and Glendale, Arizona. It is Glendale, Arizona, isn't it? That's not um, that's not Glendale, California. I don't know. I'll have to look, man. Let's see, yeah, Glendale, Arizona. Okay. And they're both uh, they're both getting ready to make their ring walks, sitting in their dressing rooms. I don't know what they're. Making us wait for over here, man. It's 20 minutes of midnight. My dog comes and wakes me up at like uh, seven. So uh, let's get this fight going here, man. Valdez is. Liam Williams has got the sombrero on. Okay. Both of these fighters made the weight by uh, with a little to spare. Valdez weighed in yesterday at 129.7. Liam Wilson 129.6. We got a 130-pound limit. <clears throat> this is for the vacant interim WBO junior lightweight title. I think that's the same one. Is it Joe Joyce that has the, uh, does he still have it? Um, uh, Zhili Zhang. Or did Zhang give it, did Zhang lose it to Parker? So is Parker the WBO interim heavyweight champion now? I don't know, man. I follow the fighters, not the titles anymore. And it looks like they're getting ready, man. <clears throat> I might do one more hit and put the bomb down for the night, I think. I might pick it up for my hit. Thank you. 
They're showing a little bit of Liam Wilson, the way he uh, distributes his weight when he throws his punches. And I see a lot of staring on and getting ready to make their ring entrances. You must have told them. What is it over there? Over there it's 9.45. Here it's 12.45, 11.45. I'm surprised my dog hasn't come out here and actually put him up because that's what he usually does on him. And right around this time, I don't think my wife did. So I think he's probably, this is after this before I, before I retire tonight too. He just turned nine last week, man. I've had him for eight years. And the smartest dog I ever had. And I've had a million dogs. We all have. But this guy just knows so many. He, you can tell him things and he knows what you're telling him. It's just weird. He's down fire, down uh, sewer grates when I take him for walks. He's just real, real smart. Doesn't, would never hurt a flea. Unless some, if somebody breaks in, maybe. Cause, I mean, he growls when people walk by. Sounds like a lion out there. I mean, mailman won't even come into my yard. But he's just so wicked friendly. Once they know him, they're like, oh, bro, they, they're friends with him. Liam's got a nice little left hook. You know, let's get these guys up here. You know, we've been, uh, we've checked their records out, checked their weight out. We checked out what the, the importance of this fight, man. The 130 pound division. A lot of, a lot of action there, man. Check out the who, who uh, in the in this super featherweight division. You've got uh, Emmanuel Navarrete sitting on top of the throne. Or Shaki Foster in this division. Joe Cardina, Rakimov, Rikishi. Maurizio Lara, Lamont Roach, Simondoff, Elner, I don't know who he is, man. Can Can thank you. It's still in it's still out there, bro. I mean there's a lot of there's, there's a lot of talent in this division. And uh checking out these cats here, man. Oscar Valdez is ranked number 26 according to boxing rec. And um, Liam Wilson is ranked number 37. So they have a lot of room to, uh, to climb the ladder with impressive victories, both of them. Neither one has cracked the top 20. You know, according to different organizations, different organizations rank fighters differently. Hooked on boxing. Salute, man. How we doing, man? Blaze. I don't know who, I don't know what Blaze you're talking about, man. Blaze one. Johnny Blaze. There's a bunch of Blazes out here. But uh good luck in finding them, man. I've been blazing here all night. And now if they're finally making that walks of ringside here, and uh I think we're going to see some fighting. This is a fight we've been waiting for all night. This is why I stepped on here. The super featherweight division. I can remember the uh, my, my favorite fighters in this division were the... Um, the catch like Cornelius Boza Edwards, uh, Raphael Bazooka Lamon, Alexis Aguayo ruled this division. 
you know, a lot of, a lot of great fighters back in the day, man. This was a action packed division. And it still is, man. Like both of these guys are ranked outside the top twenty. According to the box record, I don't know if they have a they having a beef with top rank or what. But we'll see what they made out of Valdez has only got two defeats on his record. The cool thing about this on a Friday night, it's only nine o'clock out there. These cats are going to be getting out like 10. They, they still can go out, have drinks, eat. But that's the thing I like about watching boxing over here. When it's over, I don't have to worry about nothing. Just click and, I'm, and it's gone. <laughs> Stitch Duran is in the corner of, of Oscar Valdez. And he brought his own cornerman from the U, his own cut man from the UK. But the action's building there. The judges, Chris Flores, none of the none of the um the Sutherlands. The, uh, the, the judges from Las Vegas that we all know and love. Place is having this little um, electronic light show. Introducing 28-year-old Liam Wilson, 129.6 pounds, and he's out of Australia. Okay, that guy was out of the UK, man. Oh, Carl must be fucking uh, boxing. No one even no wonder Carl was so excited when he was in here, man. He's got a fellow Aussie in here. All the time, dumb old me thought he was from uh, thought he was from the from the United Kingdom. But no, baby, this they're probably having a holiday right now. You know, Carl Carl's a homeboy. He's going nuts. He's probably got his whole fucking paycheck bet on Liam Liam Wilson to uh to, to win this fight. So this is this is gonna be some fun stuff. Did I take my No, I didn't. My, my Friday PM vitamins. Good thing I remembered. So I put them in this little, this little thing. And Fridays, I would have forgotten all about it till tomorrow. You know, it's empty. I'm gonna refill it tomorrow. But I got the the uh, osteo biflex for the uh, joints. Vitamin C for everything. Cognium for the brain health. And flaxseed oil for our muscle strength. Wash it down with a couple of big gulps of water, and that, with the uh, with the healthy nutritional program that I live by, tends to uh, to, to keep me healthy. And here we go, man. The uh, referee, Mark Nelson, giving them their last minute instructions in the center ring. The audience looks like it's going nuts. I see a lot of cans in there, man. I don't see the old Budweiser cans. I see crazy. I got some. I sent away for some stuff today online, man. Uh, THC infused seltzer, free. Two dollars postage and handling. Regularly seven ninety nine. It said. We'll see how good it is. I don't know, man. For free. I'll take anything for free. And then when I saw it was two dollars. What the hell? I still had that in my check, even though the month is almost over.
that jab popping out there by Liam Wilson with a nice uppercut by Wilson. Wilson stand up straight ahead boxer. Oscar weaving in. Oscar going low. Liam Wilson, very active, very busy, keeping that jab in Oscar's face, dropping that right hand when he can. Oscar keeping that high guard, moving side to side. Oscar moving down low, bending the knees. Liam pops him with a combination. Liam shooting out that jab. Oscar throwing a one-two. Liam popping that double or triple jab. Shoots a right hand. Keeping, keeping Valdez on his back foot. Liam Wilson. Liam moving forward. Throwing those jabs. Throwing an uppercut. Keeping Valdez off balance. Good, another good shot. Bam him with the right hand while he was backing up. Liam Wilson was getting the better of Valdez in the early, early uh, stages of this fight. Here, first round. Valdez does not want to let him get cocky. Valdez wants to establish his ground. Good uppercut by Wilson. Wilson's uh, throwing some throwing the better punches in the first part of the first round. In the, the first two minutes. Valdez trying to trying to counter over that left jab. Wilson's popping with that right in the combination. Good right hand by Wilson. First round to the Aussie. Stitch the man. Whipping down the face of Oscar Valdez in the corner, putting some ice on his over his on his forehead just to just to keep that slowly from happening. It doesn't look like it's doesn't look like it's coming up now, but he did get hit with some good punches by, by Wilson in the first round. Getting his instructions from his who's his uh who's that trainer that he's got? Anybody know? Eric Morales is in the uh is in the audience. One of my great featherweight. Start of round number two. It's gonna be a, and we got the Aussie fighting tomorrow night. We got the Aussie fighting right now. This could be make it or break it time for Australia, Carl. If you're out there, bro. Wilson is uh look look the sharper the two so far. Wilson shooting out that right hand. Valdez a little behind with that, with those long punches. A little short. Oh, Valdez just got the left hook in there. Trying to get his timing down. Oh, 
Valdez looks like he's just trying to just trying to get his timing down. Even that high guard. He doesn't want to get hit with anything solid. He wants to counter. Very, very early in this fight. Wilson keeping his hands busy, landing a lot. Valdez backs him into the ropes. Nice left hook, right hand. Valdez starting to, starting to get those punches off. Wilson leaping left hook, shoots a right hand. Valdez, pretty good defense going on right now. He's staying, staying busy, moving laterally. A clinch, referee breaks him apart. The end of the round. That round, I'll give that round to Valdez, man. Very close fight. Wilson's got some blood coming out of his nose. This is a 12 rounder. Yep, 12 rounds. Okay, here we go for the start of round number three. Wilson starts off pumping that jab, dropping the right hands, shoots a lead right. Valdez catching a lot of those punches on his forearms. Valdez getting a little bit of leverage in his punches now. Lands to the body, shoots a hook upstairs. Liam Wilson just looks like he has his feet in better position when he's throwing his punches. Valdez squares up a little bit too much. He's, he's off balance. Valdez landed upstairs. Liam takes it and fires back. Liam popping some jabs out. Valdez going low. Jab shoots over his head. Comes back, hits that body. Liam tries an uppercut. Liam Wilson's got him against the ropes. Valdez gets away. Valdez coming through with some good shots. Jab by Wilson, right hand after it. Combo by Wilson upstairs. 
also with the left hook, Paul Dez, Dez Pryor with the right hand, Paul Dez with another right hand, right hand by Wilson, Wilson, nice combination. Centering right now, back and forth, and flowing here. And that's the end of the round. Close round, but I would have to give that one to, to Wilson. The big baby Anderson fight coming up on April 13th. And we want to see if uh, Bob Arum, man, he controls both of them. Will Bob Arum, Lil Holmes. Shout out, little Holmes. Appreciate you in here, man. Never saw you in here before. I know you had the sub to comment, and uh, appreciate that, bro. Thanks so much for coming by. We go, man. Round number four has started. Wilson swarming over Valdez. Valdez, he, he's trying to use that, that crouch style. Go low, throw those hooks, Joe Frazier kind of style. But, um, but Wilson is using that Mohammed Ali kind of style. He's popping him with those jabs and those right hands. He's not giving Wilson a chance to, not giving Valdez a chance to set up. Valdez keeps chugging forward, though, man. Oh, good, good hook on the inside by Valdez. Lopez tries to return fire and Wilson tries to return fire going downstairs. I figured I have to separate them. Valdez shooting the hooks. Wilson with the jabs on the inside. Nice right hand by Valdez. Wilson goes downstairs, low blow. A little too far downstairs. Referee gives him a warning, keep it up. Takes no points away, doesn't give Valdez any time to recover. Clearly a low blow, man. Uh, no, I guess it looks like, uh, suck it up, kid. Wilson gangs, Wilson's not staying away from that body. This man, that left hook to the liver, that's the, that's the shot you want. You can say he's not shying from that body. The way he looks at it, I only, I only got a warning and uh, I'll keep him up as best I can. Valdez is on his back foot right now, man. He's um, Wilson is doing what he wants to do. Wilson's nose is definitely broken. Okay, man. I saw that leaking that blood in that corner earlier. Wilson has landed some good shots in the, in the body. Not giving up, he's just concentrating on that body, shooting those hooks, those right crosses. Man, little uh, Liam Wilson's got a plan, and he looks like he's sticking to it. Wilson is definitely tough. I 
I should, I should put this on and see what his point is saying to him. Okay, they are back to center ring for the start of round number five. Mark Cleveland's got it 38-38. That down, Don't need to listen to Timothy Bradley at any side. Okay, man, Valdez is moving forward. Wilson dropped a nice right hand. Wilson picking that jab out and Valdez on the outside. Valdez shooting the jab. Jab. Got Valdez flinching with me. Uh, got Valdez moving around with me. Big throw that right hand. The odds are uh, currently uh, they started off at three minus three seventy five for Valdez. Now they're minus seven hundred. And the odds went down for, for um, Wilson. Hey, Rascala, what do you think, man? Wilson's having success moving. Valdez back? Sure, man. You know, Wilson keeps moving those hands, too, when he, when he gets them against the ropes. He's not giving Valdez a chance to get set. Valdez, he looks like he wants to get low, slip inside, do some damage. But Wilson's just pumping that jab, nailing with the uppercut when he comes inside. So I think he's um he's had him pretty much uh you know pretty much figured out so far. Good uppercut by Valdez and by uh by Wilson. Yeah, I'm definitely getting tired here, man. I, I'm usually winding it down around this time, but uh nothing like boxing, man. I appreciate everybody that's in here. Wilson trying to line him up on the ropes with the one-two. Valdez moving moving sideways. Doesn't get caught. Valdez holding on. Once again, Wilson is uh, end of the round. Uh, there was a little bit of an unfriendly tap there before the before they went back to their corners. We wouldn't have it any other way. This is fighting. This is boxing. Well, seeing as how it's so late, it might have might have to have one more hit just to uh little slow motion action. Also, they got that end swell, keeping that cheek from. Swelling up, closing that eye. Good fight we got in front of us, my friends. They absolutely saved the best for last. Wilson shooting that right hand, man.
Valdez tripling on that jab. The second half of this fight may may turn out to be a little different than the first half. I see that they're both up in their up in their gears a little bit. And we had some fights that went to the scorecards that weren't exactly what we uh, what I expected. So maybe they uh, they both realize the best way to uh, best way to end the fight is with a with a stoppage. Take it out of the judge's hands, like my brother Marvin Hagler said. Oh, good, good uppercut by Valdez. Valdez with a hook downstairs. Another hook, another hook upstairs. Valdez, beautiful uppercut, man. Valdez is starting to throw some punch in the authority. William constant motion, shooting a jab, the one two. Valdez, his punches have more explosion on them. Not landing quite as often, but when he does, man, it's uh, uh when he does the effects are, are being seen by, by Wilson with that blood dripping out of his nose. Wilson doubling that jab, tripling that jab. That's what he wants to do. Beautiful combination by Wilson. Another one. Valdez says, yeah, come on, give me another one. And Valdez wants him to start throwing punches, open it up, make a freaking warfare out of it. That's Valdez's game. Wilson comes right in there with a nice combination, man. These guys are going at it. Good stuff going on here, man. Good stuff in this 140 pound. Is this 100? Yeah, I think it is, man. 130 pound. Super featherweight. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of round number six. First half of the fight is over. I think that was round number six, man. We'll know in a minute. So we are on. Um, we're in it to win it over here, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate all you cats that are in here, man. Please hit the thumbs up button. Valdez's face doesn't look look like it's been uh, been messed up too much. He doesn't have any uh, abrasions on there. Mm, that uppercut, devastating on the inside. I don't know if that was the same one at a different angle or if it was a different one. Oh, and that left hook by Valdez, man. You know, Valdez's punches are making us uh, having more impact on, uh, on Wilson when he lands, but Wilson's sheer volume. If Wilson just keeps throwing those punches, he's, uh, he's just uh, outlanded Valdez, four, five to one. But when he when he slows down and goes punch for punch, that's when Valdez excels here. Oh, good, good right hand by Valdez. Valdez show, throwing the right cross, the left hook. That, those are his punches. And then he does with a nice uppercut, too. He goes three jabs by Valdez. So Valdez looks like he uh he looks like he might be moving to another gear. I don't know, man. Uh, I think Wilson's gotta Wilson's gotta do something here, man, and show me that he's he's still in this fight now. Valdez pushing him away. So 
I'm not seeing the snap on Wilson's punches. Right hand by Wilson. All this acknowledged it. All day shoots it right over the jab. Good, good left hand by Valdez. Valdez going downstairs and upstairs. Got Wilson in some kind of trouble here, man. Nail them again. You are he's hammering Wilson right now. Wilson's defenseless. Hovering up. Wilson holds on. Referee takes a good look at Wilson. Valdez moves in. Valdez taking a step back. He's still got 30 seconds to go. Plenty of time. Nailing Wilson now with hooks. Right crosses. Wilson's in trouble. Wilson holds on. Referee breaks him apart. Wilson's got to throw some jabs right now. Wilson's got to get Valdez off when he's covering up. Valdez is getting through with his shots. Boom, to the head. That's it. Referee's seen enough. Fight's over. Valdez stops him, man. Stops him in round number seven. And Ten seconds left to go. What can you say? This was a very entertaining fight, man. Oscar Valdez creeping his way back up in the rankings once again. Uh, Wilson, tough, tough kid, man. Almost too tough for his own good. He just kept, he, he probably still throwing that jab right now, man. Thanks, Rascal. I appreciate that. I'll have to remember that, not to look at the chat when I'm, when I'm calling a fight, man. But uh, thank you, brother. That was, that was an exciting ending, man. I, I dug it. All I can say now is Valdez can uh, stop moving his way back up to the up in that 130 pound class, you know, top rank. They they got some good fighters in that division. I mean, shit, man. Let's let's get it on. But um, man, I've been here now for f almost five hours. It's past midnight. I gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta let the dog out. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming in here, man. It was great boxing. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I'm going to be here tomorrow night for the uh, for the same thing with the uh, with the Tim Zoo. The, the whole card, man. We're going to see the, the, the Towering Inferno, Fandora, and Tim Zoo. We're going to see Pitbull. We're going to see Roly Romero, uh, Bonacek, and uh, Mendoza, and another fight on the card. But uh, definitely stop in here with me and enjoy and, and see it. And please enjoy it. I enjoyed all your cats tonight, man. God bless everybody. Daryl, bro, thank you so much, man. Rask a lot. Appreciate you in here, my brother. Rolling with the punches was in here, man. You guys, man, you're a little home. Thanks, you guys, for being here. I've been here by myself, hooked on boxing. And, uh, hey, Bruce Gas, Boxing Jazz, and more. I'm out of here. Good night. S aka token two. You know I had to drop a track for my boy. What you want? Yeah, yeah. been here rapping boys out here till the baby. I'm the hardest to the nigga. I ain't signed to no label. Hey, Bruce Gas putting up fights on the table. I'm um, calling that box since Kane versus Abel. So as soon as gas, you would think that she was famous. I'm um, the people sample like I'm an athlete. Shut shut up, Bruce Gas. One day we gon' meet. Yeah, we gon' pull it down. We gon' smoke another weed. Yeah, we gon' pull it down. Take get hit. I was just over two. Slip a hell of shots. Feel like Tyson with the pink little glove on my side. But it hit just like Isaac Cruz. Shut up, man. Chat real shit. That's my fucking dude. We always cooking on the pan. Straps my side. I ain't talking about no sand. Bruce passed me the blunt. I'ma light it like a candle. Hey, nonstop. Bars, man, I always fit flames. 